WJCL Savannah, your hometown station. Here we are on a summer-like day on the first weekend. Time went in Division 1A. Bowl games are settled. Bowl matchups are settled. But in Division 1AA, the play picture comes more sharply into focus. Will these two teams be in that picture? Well, I tell you what, both these teams have excellent chances of making the playoffs, but they can ill afford another loss. Both are at 5-3. and three. Both are independents. And as an independent, a 7-4 and four record, which would mean one more loss for either one of these clubs, just won't cut the mustard. For Georgia Southern, the Eagles have really come on now, winners of four consecutive games. And for the Eagles, with apologies to B.B. King, the thrill is back, not gone. Joe Ross puts the thrill in that offense, and he is back to form, Delano. Well, that's right. And, of course, Joe Ross has suffered some nagging injuries, a knee injury, as a matter of fact. And a lot of people thought that he would never be able to come back. They said he just wasn't cutting the way he once did. But, hey, he's cutting well now. He looks like he's getting better each game. And, yes, he is back, Phil. Yes, he is. James Madison is running an offense similar to that of Georgia Southern, and Eric Williams is at the controls of that offense. Well, Eric Williams, in one word, sporadic. Sometimes he plays well, sometimes he just doesn't look as if he shows up. Last week, he played a tremendous game against Navy. Two weeks ago against Youngstown State, he had a terrible time of it. So consistency is the name of the game for Eric Williams. Yeah, Eric coming off his best game of the year. Well, when we come back, we'll take a look at today's starting lineups. The kickoff is just minutes away. This is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. When you play defense against the Georgia Southern Eagles, you make a decision, Delano. Either you stop the fullback or you defense the quarterback, Raymond Gross. What's Joe Perzicki of James well, Madison decided to do today? Well, from what I understand, Joe Perzicki has decided to stop the pitch, stop Raymond Gross, get him to the outside, and let Joe Ross have the ball. Georgia Southern's offense is like a Rubik's Cube. You just can't figure it out, can you? <laughs> Joe Ross has averaged over 100 yards in the last two games, up 20 yards from earlier in the year, so we expect a big day from Joe. Well, we'll be back to set the starting lineups today and take a look at the opening kickoff right after this. has opened the last 17. Make that the last 18 games by kicking off. Don Norton teeing it up for Georgia Southern wearing the home blue. Last year, Georgia Southern kicking off and Tom Green back deep to receive today for James Madison returned it 70 yards. So we're going to see Raymond Gross and the Georgia Southern offense on the second possession barring a turnover here we'll see that defense first for georgia southern today's officials chip ferguson is the referee native of marietta georgia 41 years old chip ferguson is the vice president of a computer sales company in atlanta don norton set the boot off and tom green is deep to the bottom of the screen this is Green, number three, at the goal line. The 10, knocked down at the 15-yard line. Tom Green with a return of 15 yards. The tackle made by Nick Davis of Georgia Southern, the freshman from Griffin. So let's set that offense. Eric Williams is a sophomore quarterback. Took over midway through last year. Leads the team in running. Eric hitting on 46% of his passes. The fullback directly behind him is big 245-pound senior Willie Lanier. 
Leon Taylor in motion. That's Lanier right up the gut. Credit the Georgia Southern defensive line with the stop. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for, for James Madison's offense. Across the front, Brian Reese is a senior, as is Eric Baylor and big D.R. Carlson, the left tackle. In the backfield, Eric Williams is a sophomore. Joe Sparksman, a redshirt freshman, will alternate with Willie Lanier. Campbell and Taylor are seniors. Thornton is a senior. Big six foot, six inch Dwayne Hayes will be a key matchup against the cornerbacks of Georgia Southern's defense. Second down, Williams at the 15. Dancing out of bounds at the 20. Shane Maxwell in pursuit. Tripped over his own feet. That'll bring up third down at about five. Let's take a look at the Georgia Southern defense. Steve Busoletti leads the team in sacks. Pat Carr, Tim Brown, and Gibb Smith are a pair of talented seniors. Mike West and Paul Sickley, the linebackers. West had an outstanding game last year. Whitley and Oglesby, the two outstanding cornerbacks, have started since their freshman years. They both are juniors. Third down for James Madison. Williams looking for Thornton. Knocked down by Kevin Whitley. Jim Mutimer, rather Shane Maxwell also there. Forward progress will be marked at the 22, shy of the first down. Well, that time Kevin Whitley did a tremendous job of playing the little hitch pass. He was not too many yards off of the receiver, and he was able to come up and make the link, and he made sure that he went backwards and not forward. A good play. Two outstanding punters today. Scott Todd was fifth in the nation a year ago, a senior. Gets pressure, just barely gets it off. Maybe Giles got a hand on that. Rodney Oglesby will let the ball roll dead at the 46-yard line. Well, we'll see Georgia Southern's much improved offense for the first possession of the game. Raymond Gross at the controls, the senior. His fullback is Joe Ross. Right behind him, and Ross is really picked up in the last two games. He has that burst back. Gross rolling. Going deep. Looking for Sorrell. Georgia Southern. First play of the game. No flags. This will stand. What an offensive call by Georgia Southern. Coach Jay Russell, who makes the calls, they usually come out of the option and they say, hey, stop our option first and we'll do something else. Not today, buddy. They come right out and go for the low bombing. Terrence Terrell, Georgia Southern's only deep threat. Raymond Gross, he fakes the option, drops back, and Ter Terrence Terrell going down the sideline. He just flat out runs the defender and makes a tremendous over-the-shoulder catch. That's six points, baby. comes on to convert the extra point. Wow, 45 seconds into this ball game. Let's take a break. Georgia Southern is on the board and in the lead. Last year in this meeting, James Madison electrified its home crowd for homecoming by jumping out in front. And now in front of a Overflow packed house here at Allen Paulson Stadium. Georgia Southern jumps out in front, 7-0. On a 54-yard touchdown bomb by Raymond Gross to that man, Terrence Sorrell. It's Raymond Gross's sixth touchdown pass of the year and Sorrell's first touchdown grab. James Madison defeated, of course, Navy last weekend at Navy in front of 29,000, also a homecoming crowd. So it's important that Georgia Southern try to take James Madison out of it completely. They're not intimidated by homecoming crowds. Norton to boot. Back deep, Tom Green. And Leon Taylor. This is Green trying to get on it at the seven. A stiff arm, and he goes down. Sean Austin, a reserve defensive back, makes an aggressive stop at the six-yard line. And both kickoffs have seemed to baffle the James Madison return specialist. They were just standing there watching the ball. Can you believe that? You've got to get that ball and cover it at least. Well, there's a scoring drive. One play, it's a bomb. <laughs> First offensive play of the game for Georgia Southern. And now with the second offensive possession for James Madison. 
Eric Taylor brings him to the line. Joe Sparksman's the fullback. Taylor keeps it. Shane Maxwell keeps contain and brings him down. Pat Parr also off the defensive line, in on the stop. A gain of three for Eric Williams. It's second down at the 10. Well, so far, Phil, we've seen pretty much domination by Georgia Southern's defensive line. Every time James Madison tries to run the ball, there is a swarming Georgia Southern defense, and that's the way Georgia Southern has to play to be effective. Three wide receivers, McLeod at the bottom of the screen, big six foot six inch Hayes in the slot at the top. Williams rolling, has time, the bomb right back to Hayes, but no, incomplete. Right through his hands at the 40 yard line. Eric Williams, plenty of harm, aired it out 55 yards from his own five, and he got hit when he let it loose. Oh, Mark Giles looked as if he had it played perfectly, and he lets the receiver get behind him. That ball could have been caught if it's thrown perfectly. And, uh, turn about is fair play, as they would say, because he would have been gone for the touchdown. Well, let's give the offensive coordinator of James Madison, Tony DeVio, credit. He runs the multi-bone, and he comes right back and says, you throw a bomb to us, we'll come back at you. Leon Taylor in motion, Williams to throw. As Hayes, first down. Up to the 26-yard line, gain of 16 yards. Mark Giles, the safety from Warner Robbins, makes the tackle. Good job by Hayes that time of finding the open seam. He's just running a little curling pattern inside. He's going to get behind the linebackers in front of the defensive backs. He makes the catch and gets a nice little gain. There. First down, Williams keeps it. Sure tackle by Paul Sickley. Sickley, a junior from Dalton, Georgia. Wrapped him up after a gain of two. It's second down. Sickley, a good time at, a good job at time of uh, making the open field tackle because I tell you what, if Eric Williams gets by him, he's got nothing but daylight around the sideline for at least 10 or 15 yards. So Sickley making the saving tackle there. Williams has run for four touchdowns, has passed for one this year. Joe Sparksman is his fullback. Williams right behind him, tripped up by Paul Sickley, a gain of three, make it third down and about five. Into the lineup for the Georgia Southern defense, freshman linebacker Nick Davis, freshman from Griffin, Georgia. Number 47, Davis has three interceptions so far this year. Hardly played on half the downs. He's the second leading interceptor on the club. Rodney Oglesby has four. He leads the team. Williams getting pressure from Smith and batted down. Jeff Smith, the two-time All-America, bats it down, and that'll bring up fourth down. And Scott Cobb, the punter, for the second time today. Jeff Smith just waltzed in that time and said, hello, uh... Pardon me, do you have any grape to bone? He knocks it right down. What a play by Gil Smith. He was untouched coming in. Scott Todd, number five in the nation last year with a 40-yard average. His first boot today, only 31, and he's punting into the face of a stiff breeze. Rodney Oglesby back at his 35. No pressure. Fair catch. Oglesby at the 35. Fair catch. Well, a frenetic start to this game. Georgia Southern gets the ball, and on one play, the bomb from Raymond Gross to Terrence Sorrell. And now for the second time this afternoon, the offense heads to the field, and a very appreciative crowd giving a hand to the special teams. You know, Phil, it's amazing how sometimes a team can work on something all week. I'm sure James Madison almost pulled their hair out this week trying to stop the option, work on the option, and Georgia Southern fools him and comes out with the bomb on the first play. Raymond... Pitch to Carl Miller. Gets outside. Upton Jackson knocks him out of bounds. Carl Miller looks like he picks up the first down. We'll check the spot. Upton Jackson, outstanding defensive back for James Madison and an outstanding story as well. And we've got timeout. Let's 
an official's time for the spot on this play. And watch Daryl Bells will come in. He does a good job there. You can see him holding his hands up there in the corner of the screen. He was saying, hey, I almost flipped him, but I'm smarter than that. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to hold up. And that allowed the play to be made. If he would have gone ahead and pushed him just a little bit, the referee was dead on the play. He could have called a clipping. So a good play by Daryl Bell. So that's what you call a smart wide receiver on that play. And two weeks ago against Central Florida, Georgia Southern had a lot of problems with clipping. I'm sure the coaches worked on them and said, hey, you got to be a smart football player. Don't make that clip. Difficult to see just inches. Referee Chip Ferguson holds his hands up just a few inches apart. That spot was a bit shy, apparently, of where Carl Miller went out of bounds. Let's take a look at the Georgia Southern starting offense. Rex Nottage, John Wilson, Rusty Parrish, Miguel Ayub, and Danny Smith across the front. They're a young offensive line. Raymond Gross is senior. Ross is a senior. Hopkins and Miller, the slot backs. Terrence Sorrell caught that bomb. Daryl Belser at the split ends. Second down and one at the 45. Ross. Stumbling forward and off the offensive line surge by Rusty Parrish, the center. Joe Ross picks up the first down. Penalty flag on the play. It looks as if it's offside against Georgia Southern. While they mark that off, let's look at the James Madison defensive starters. On the offense, snapping before they're ready for play. I was wrong. I was wrong. So what? So what? <laughs> Delay a game, offsides, all the same, right? Five yard penalty. Well, Richard Bryan, an outstanding linebacker, leading the team in sacks. Roger Waters, a converted quarterback, and Tracy Hurrah. The defensive backs, problems at the corners. McIver and Parrott. The two starting cornerbacks have been knocked out this year with injury. And here's second down. Gross getting trouble and going down. Ferris Bay had the right tackle in the backfield, and that'll bring up third down. James Madison, good pursuit on that play, and Raymond Gross really had nowhere to pitch the ball. Actually, it was a smart move by Raymond Gross. As you see him going to the right, he fakes the uh, handoff to Joe Ross, and there is nobody to pitch it to because that man is covered. When, the option, when you talk about the option, you talk about covered and uncovered. That time, the pitch man was covered, so Raymond Gross decided to keep it. Smart play. Third down and seven. Carl Miller trailing. Does not get a block, and he's knocked down. Robert Smart from nearby Clio, Georgia. A homecoming for him, and he makes his first play of the afternoon, and that'll bring up fourth down and bring up the Georgia Southern punt unit. Robert Smart from Effingham County High School makes the play. And you see Robert Raymond Gross pitching out to Carl Miller, and uh, Carl Miller had some daylight out there, and he took a good block from Darrell Bell, so he didn't get it that time. Terry Harbin getting pressure off the side of his foot. Makes a James Madison hop. And Clint Averett will down it at the 36-yard line. Only a 23-yard boot by Terry Harbin, and he's been having an outstanding year. In the early in the first quarter, let's take a timeout. Georgia Southern on top of James Madison by a touchdown. Tony DeMio is the offensive coordinator of James Madison. Third possession this afternoon for his offense and the best field position by far, so far. Took over initially at the 15-yard line, not much doing. And at the 6-yard line, and now finally at the 36-yard line of Georgia Southern. A year ago, James Madison jumped out in front of this game 21-6 before the Eagles rallied late in the game to win it 36-21. They spoiled JMU's homecoming, and here's Williams keeping it himself and having room and speed. Jim Mutimer out there slows him up, rips a big gain of about 30. Eric Williams brought down by Darius Dawson, a freshman linebacker. Eric Williams, the good fake to the fullback, the same option that Georgia Southern runs, and he cuts up inside his blocking. And boy, he's he's only about 150 pounds. He is just a jitterbug. He is a nightmare for defensive backs trying to come over and stop him. He probably only weighs about 155 when he's uh, soaking wet, but he can really move. Yes, he can. Leon Taylor, the halfback, threw a key block on outside linebacker Michael Berry to spring that play. To the air. Intercepted Paul Sickley. He has a blocker at the 50. Williams up there, knocks him down at the 30. Paul Sickley.
Bradley comes up with the interception. A return of about 30 yard line, 30 yards, and Georgia Southern is in business. Sickley, a linebacker from Dalton, Georgia. And you can see Eric Williams dropping back. I don't think he even saw Sickley. Sickley was coming over from his linebacker position. He saw his running back cutting up on a little slant pattern, and Sickley kind of hid behind the defensive line, came out, made the interception, and he's off to the races. Only one person was able to stop him. First interception of the year for Paul Sickley. Raymond Gross has a man wide open. Terrence Sorrell, touchdown Georgia Southern. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that look at Raymond Gross the counter option he steps back and Terrence Sorrell had made a tremendous move you couldn't see it on the quarterback look how far behind the defensive back number 27 for James Madison Robert Smart is from Clio Georgia oh my goodness it has not been a good homecoming for Robert Smart so far because Terrence Sorrell is just having a field day Mike Dallas converts the extra point Let's take a timeout, a network timeout on the Georgia Southern Sports Network. As the flyer, as you won first class at Coach Prices. Mississippi State, nothing. Leon Taylor back for James Madison. Already, Taylor and Tom Green set to receive Don Norton's third kickoff. We're just beyond <laughs> five minutes into this ball game. 8.40 of the first. Georgia Southern jumps out in front with two big plays, 14-0, and Delano, Joe Perzicki of James Madison said yesterday his first priority in this game, limit big plays, prevent big plays by Georgia Southern's offense. And there you have two Raymond Gross touchdown passes to Terrence Sorrell. We talked about the Eagles taking the Dukes out of the ball game early because if they hang around, it could be a tough day for Georgia Southern. Well, they're doing a pretty good job of it right now, but uh, still a long way to go in this ball game. Norton with the win behind him out of the end zone. And into the picnic area. You see <laughs> Kirk Russell down there did already it? working on that cigar. Did he catch the ball down here? Did it come close to him? <laughs> well, here's James Madison needing to go to work on offense because of, again, a quick scoring drive. One play covers 30 yards, gross to Terrence Sorrell for Sorrell's second touchdown catch of the year. Not exactly time-consuming drives. A total of 14 seconds to score two touchdowns for Georgia Southern. The fullback, not much at the middle of the Georgia Southern defensive line. Steve Busoletti. Tim Brown, number 94, getting up out of the stack. Right now, James Madison having trouble moving the ball. Of course, they did move it well last time, but Eric Williams just didn't see Paul Sickley, I believe, behind the defensive line. And we're on an Eric Williams watch right now because sooner or later, Tom Green could be coming in to replace him. Williams runs into Mark Giles and runs into trouble. That'll bring up third down after a gain of one, Michael Berry. Junior linebacker from Atlanta. They're at the bottom of the pile. Third down and eight. Michael Berry, Bill, a tremendous athlete. We talked about him in the Central Florida game. Uh, he's had some personal problems, but he seems to be getting things together. The coaches are really high on him. And uh, uh, I think uh, one of the coaches, as a matter of fact, said that he is a pro prospect. He's a very good player. to Dwayne Hayes, complete first down for James Madison. Mike West drops back into coverage and drops Hayes, but not after a gain of 16 and a first down. See Eric Williams drop back, and again, Dwayne Hayes just on the other side of the field, a little curl pattern again, getting behind the linebackers in front of the, the defensive backs, and it's a, an actual, actually a very safe route. Eric Williams coming off his best passing game of the season. 10 of 22 for 174 yards against Navy. Now he's passing out of necessity. James Madison playing catch up here in the middle of the first period. Williams following his fullback. Michael Berry wraps him up and brings him down, but not before 
Eric Williams picks up eight. That'll be second down and two. Michael Berry. Second down. The crowd still pouring in here, Phil. A Georgia Southern notorious for being latecomers to ball games, especially homecoming. Everybody's leaving those parties. A tremendous crowd here today to watch this football game. Joe Sparksman is the fullback on second down. Inside handoff, nothing doing. Curtis Gordon brings down Kenny Sims for a loss of three. Third down and six. <laughs> and look at the celebration there. A little show-off stuff there. Curtis Gordon taking a couple of slaps from one of his teammates. And Curtis Gordon, he kind of walked into a tackle. He says, here's the reverse, here's the reverse, and uh, here I am, right in your face. Number 45, Keith Ray. A rarity for both of these defense and that they practice against this offense all the time, and now they get to face it. The two similar offenses. Williams has room to run, and as McLeod, Rodney Oglesby batted down. David McLeod, the intended receiver, Rodney Oglesby breaks it up at about the 15-yard line. Mark Giles, the safety, also back there to break it up. Scott Todd is the punter, a senior from Gloucester, Virginia. Back is Oglesby at the 22-yard line. Tight spiral, beautiful boot at the 15. Oglesby, a return of seven yards up to the 22-yard line. Let's take a timeout. Five minutes remaining in the first period in Statesboro. Co-defensive coordinator Jeff McInerney working with the defensive line and linebackers on the Georgia Southern sideline. Key defender for James Madison getting up. Cliff Pettis, number 90. Pettis is the nose guard from Crew, Virginia. He also has been the fill-in snapper on punts, extra points, and field goals. Injured James Injuries have plagued James Madison's defense this year, wiping out starting defensive cornerbacks Don Phelps and John Gutter. Both out, so this will be the third starter from what would have been an outstanding defense for James Madison in about three weeks to go down. Raymond Gross operating from deep in his own territory. We'll pick it up at the 22. The further Cliff Pettis gets off the field, the faster his speed goes as far as getting off the field, so that's encouraging to see. We certainly hope the Pettis is okay. Joe Perzicki, the head coach of James Madison, 43 years old, in his sixth year at JMU. Played his college ball, was a defensive back at Delaware, has coached at Delaware State, and now at JMU, and he's had success there. Has produced a pro draft pick every year. He has that one standout defensive player just about every season. Raymond Gross cutting it upfield. Gross up to the 29-yard line, a gain of six. In on the tackle, Shane Henson, a linebacker. Well, we talked about Joe Przyski, the head coach for James Madison, saying he was going to give up the dive to Joe Ross and try to contain Raymond Gross. That time he didn't. Raymond did a good job of rolling out. Talk about killer statistics. Wow. Only two passes, 84 yards. And the two big touchdowns so far. Georgia Southern giving it to Lester Eifer, the backup fullback from Warner Robins, Georgia. That brings up third down and about four. A week ago, Eiford and Joe Ross had 10 carries each, both 80 yards each in that romp over Savannah State, 54 to seven. Raymond also had a pair of touchdown passes in that game. And this brings up third down. Throws to Sorrell, out of bounds, incomplete, and that brings up fourth down, and Terry Harbin, the punter. Four minutes remaining in the first period. We're still on the back of our heels. This crowd is stunned by the developments. Two touchdown passes by Raymond Gross. 
Georgia Southern leading James Madison 14 to nothing here in the first. Harvin from his own 15 getting pressure. Anthony Archer back for James Madison. That ball end over end out of bounds with a spot at the 39 yard line. Well, this is the sixth meeting between these two independents in Division I AA. Georgia Southern has won the last four. And we've had some wild games in this series. You go back to the first meeting in 85. <laughs> Let's not go back to that, please. <laughs> That's the lone James Madison win. Charles yes. Haley, the outstanding linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers, outstanding in that game. That's a real man. He was a big boy when we played against him, and he really shut us down on that cold, dreary day in Harrisburg, Virginia. Eric Williams on first down at the 39. Looking for Leon Taylor. Incomplete. In fact, yesterday when I talked to Coach Joe Perzicki, he talked about what a wild one it was on Georgia Southern homecoming back in 1986. Final score in that one, this is a rare game, and he, he thinks one of the only ever in Division I history, 45-35, Georgia Southern wins, no punts, either a <laughs> touchdown or a turnover. Great game, he called it a track meet. <laughs> Even though he lost it, he had fun recollection of that game. Williams on the draw on second down. Picks up the first down, still on his feet at the 50. The 45, dancing, eluding the grasp of Rodney Oglesby and out of bounds. Man, is he athletic. He's a jitterbug. He's just a little jitterbug. You know those little things you see in the water and, and you look at him, they're kind of skinny and they kind of just, you know, sputter there and sputter there. Look at him. He's rolling, he's rolling, he's looking. He jumps over the man on the ground. What a tremendous run. He looks at Rodney Oglesby. Watch the movie puts on Rodney Oglesby. He stops and says, whoop. Hello, and you just couldn't see it, but he did it. I trust you, he did it. Great move. <laughs> Under four minutes remaining in the first quarter. First down at the 44 for James Madison. Inside handoff, Mike Campbell. Pulling ahead for a gain of seven, Rodney Oglesby and, and Giff Smith nine. make the tackle. Also in on that tackle, Mike West, the middle linebacker, a senior from Roswell. A, a suburb of Atlanta. Mike West a year ago had 18 tackles 18. at James Madison. 18 tackles, a tremendous day for Mike West. James Madison runs what they call the multi-bone. Georgia Southern calls it the flex bone. That play an inside counter is a staple of the multi-bone and offensive coordinator, Tony DeMio. Williams tripped up. Michael Berry extending the grass when he was on the ground and under blocker Mike Campbell. Gain of two, or check that, yeah, gain of two for Eric Williams. Take a look at Eric, the fake to the dive man, and he rolls out, and his feet just gets a little tripped up there, or right, may have been able to pick up a few extra yards. Third down and two. Williams has room to run. Dances out of bounds, picks up a block. Flipping could be the call. Freshman Nick Davis out there in pursuit. Dwayne Hayes, that big split in, threw a block on Davis right along the line, right in front of the James Madison bench, and that's where the flag flies. Well, we talked about it earlier, Phil, when I mentioned Daryl Belser, uh, just about a drive or two ago, being a smart wide receiver. We had flipping on the offense. Still going to be third down. Chip Ferguson is our referee. And you see Eric Williams rolling left. This is what I'm talking about, being a smart wide receiver. Here comes Dwayne. Now, why make this hit? He's got it. He's got picked up his 10 yards there, and then you're going to make that hit and bring it all back. And coaches cannot stand it. There you see it. Obviously, a club. And Dwayne Hayes got up on his head as if I didn't make that clip, but it's obvious he didn't. Third down and 15. Williams, Jeff Smith giving chase, throws it up. Almost picked off. Jim Mutimer and Rodney Oglesby around senior receiver Keith Thornton. Kevin Whitney and Dwayne Hayes kind of stare themselves off. And they patted each other on the butt and said, good job. And that's 
that's good to see. A uh, good rivalry between these two clubs, a good clean rivalry. Jeff Smith has three sacks on the year and had his sights set on number four. Oglesby standing back at his 14. Scott Todd into the face of a breeze from his 40. Fair catch at the 11. Two minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first period. Fast-paced start to this game. And a start that has been in line with Georgia Southern's recent offensive explosion. Eagles have ever scored in the last two games 92 points and rolled up over 900 total yards in the last two games against Central Florida and Savannah State. And already 14 points on the board against James Madison in the final two minutes of the first period. Carl Miller in motion. Joe Ross on the pitch, has a block. The 20, the 30, Austin Jackson at the 40, wrestles him out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Joe Ross with a gain of 39. We talked about Georgia Southern's offense being like a Rubik's Cube earlier. They can take that fullback and they can use him as a pitch man. And you see Joe Ross, a uh, big gaping hole. And a lot of people would say that Joe Ross would have gone all the way had it not been for his knee injury uh, a year ago. But I tell you what, there was an angle there by number 16 for James Madison. Chance Ward, a good job of running him down. Joe Ross, a good pickup. Raymond Gross cutting back, picks up nine into James Madison territory at the 47-yard line. Check that spot. Well, they're going to call it a first down. Chip Ferguson, the referee, gives the signal first and 10 for Georgia Southern at the 47. And as far as Georgia Southern running the ball, this is the first time they've had anything consistent back-to-back. -back. Let's see if Georgia Southern continues to run it. Ferris Fayhead back in this game. The ball is loose. Heads up play by Joe Ross jumping on it. Jermel Harris got penetration and got his hands on Raymond Gross. Fumble on the pitch, but Joe Ross recovers it. Well, I tell you what, uh, I think on that play, if you watch it, this is a fullback pass. Joe Ross is looking to throw it. It just goes on the ground because you can see Terrence Sorrell downfield doing a little fake, and then he tried to get open, and the defensive back had grabbed him because Terrence Terrell was getting ready to break wide open. If that ball would have been caught by Joe Ross, there would have been a pass interference or another touchdown. Gross. Rolling. Has Belser. Off his hands and incomplete at the 37-yard line. Would not have been enough for a first down. That brings up third down and 18. We're under the final minute of the first period. Talk about that fumble. Georgia Southern runs a drill because of that high-risk triple option flex bone. The ball's going to be on the ground often. They've only lost one fumble in the last four games. In fact, they went three consecutive games without losing a fumble for the first time since the rebirth of football under Irk Russell. You know what they do with that drill? They take the ball and they throw it down and say, get it. I hate that drill. <laughs> Third down in a bundle. Gross has Sorrell. Overthrows at the 12-yard line. Richard Grievous giving chase, but he was whipped by a step. That'll bring up fourth down, and that'll bring on Terry Harvin with 50 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Already a touchdown pass at 54 yards, end up 30. And right there, Raymond Gross from his own 45, cutting loose. Anthony Archer, a sophomore, is back at the 11. High spiral, takes it at the 10. Nice move. Wrapped up, nope. Dancing out of bounds, out of the grasp of Don Hudson, the free safety, a backup. Also getting down there in a hurry, Jason Whitehead, a backup receiver. Well, if you're a Dukes fan, James Madison, you have this to think about with just 37 seconds remaining in the first period. The Dukes have been a slow starting club. The second quarter has been their period to really get going. In fact, they've only given up one touchdown all year and have outscored their opponents 57 to seven in the second quarter. Eric Williams on first down. Joe Sparksman, the freshman, is his fullback. Williams keeping, cutting up to the 30. Big thud by Jim Mutimer, the safety. 
Today's game is telecast under rights granted by the Georgia Southern Sports Network. Any retransmission or other use of the pictures or descriptions of this game are strictly prohibited without the express written consent of the Georgia Southern Sports Network. Announcers for today's telecast are employed by the Georgia Southern Sports Network. So you saw some of the cheerleaders uh, usually on homecoming. They invite, oh, look at this guy up on top of the roof with the Confederate flag waving. Everybody's having a good time here at Allen E. Paulson Stadium here at Georgia Southern. <laughs> Enjoying some sweet tea, no doubt. Here on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon, 80 degrees and full of sunshine. First down, Eric Williams. Ball fake, has Thornton, overthrow. Second interception of the ball game. Second interception of the season by Jim Mutimer, the junior from Dunwoody, Georgia. Well, so far, there had been a trend for James Madison to have Dwayne Hayes go and run a curl route. This time, he fakes the curl, goes back outside, but the ball was underthrown, and Jim Mutimer, Johnny on the spot with the pickoff. Well, that's the end of the first period. We'll swap into the field, and we'll take a break on the Georgia Southern Sports Network. Now available on videotape, the amazing... Pictures from Statesboro, Allen Paulson Stadium. An overflow crowd here today. And here's the founder, the father of Georgia Southern football. Who is that man with the bald head, smoking that cigar? <laughs> Raymond Gross takes over first down at the 45-yard line. Inside handoff, Carl Miller, nothing doing whatsoever. Ferris Bayhead back in the lineup, or check that. Brian Lewis, a backup at tackle, in there on the tackle. Tim Stowers taking a look at his offense. Georgia Southern trying the little Utah pass, and it's no fun for Carl Miller catching the ball. With <laughs> Brian Lewis riding his back, gee whiz. Lewis filling in for Ferris Fayhead, who went out in the first quarter limping off with his knee. Raymond Gross, nice fake. Still on his feet at the 40, the 35. At the 30, up to the 25-yard line. Gain of 20. And a first down for Georgia Southern. That's Raymond Gross at his best, matching moves right now with Eric Williams. Exactly. Raymond Gross is really a tremendous athlete. Follows a bevy of blockers around the left end and says, hey, I'm going to leave you. He cuts it up. He has that ball out there kind of loosely. The coaches don't like to see that, but he's gifted enough to hold on to it. And then he does the rest on his own. Well, he's got a few blockers down there. I don't want to take that away from him. Joe Ross, check that. Lester Eifer, the backup fullback, pushing the pile forward, running right behind center Rusty Parrish. Gain of five up to the 20. That's just a routine five-yard pickup. And uh, if you keep getting routine five-yard pickups, sooner or later, you'll be in the end zone. <laughs> Tommy Spangler, co-defensive coordinator, working with the defensive backs on the sideline. Second down and five at the 20. Early second quarter. Shannon Bisman makes the tackle, but not before Lester Eford busts forward for a gain of eight and a first down for Georgia Southern. Lester Eford taking the straight dive. We talked about Coach Krasinski giving that dive away to Georgia Southern. Not necessarily giving it to them, but he certainly don't want to see Raymond Gross hurting them on the corner. And that time, Lester Eford hurt them straight up the middle. This is an important drive for James Madison. They have got to stop Georgia Southern and get back in this ballgame. Gross cutting up field. Lunging forward to the eight-yard line. Outside linebacker Richard Bryant, a junior from Washington, Pennsylvania, makes the tackle. We haven't heard much yet from the James Madison linebacker, Shannon Bisman, a middle linebacker from Kaiser, West Virginia. He's a junior, the top tackler on the Dukes, and Roger Waters, the senior from Carmichael's, Pennsylvania. Second down, Gross. This is Ross. Up to the four-yard line, Robert Smart, the cornerback, comes up and fights off a block. 
and makes the initial contact. Robert Smart played high school ball here nearby. We talked about that. He played high school ball against Raymond Gross. That's right. Many of you know that Raymond Gross played for Bravo Institute under the leadership of Coach Clifford Johnson, a five program there. I played there as well. Yes, I did. At Effingham County, uh, hop, skipping the jumper down the road, and Robert Smart played there against Raymond Gross. So these guys kind of familiar. Third down and one. Raymond Gross has it. Touchdown, Touchdown Raymond Gross. Let's check who that player is. Touchdown That's run Gross. by Raymond Gross. Makes the score at Georgia Southern. The play again, Delano. Raymond, Raymond does a good job of counter step. He comes out to the right, and he's going to take it in himself, and he does a good job of stretching, I think. That's where he may have hurt himself. He may have pulled something, maybe a, a rib or something of that nature, stretching that ball, trying to get it in for the touchdown. A tremendous effort. You just hope nothing's wrong with him. In fact, there are two Eagles down on the field. And Gross is up now. Raymond Gross is up, but we're looking at Daryl Hopkins. What a season it has been for Daryl Hopkins. He has played hurt throughout. We talk about what an all-around player that Hopkins is. That's how he's been injured, all around his body. <laughs> Daryl Hopkins suffers tendonitis on both knees. He's had a turf toe this year, a pulled left hamstring, suffered a concussion, injured all over. Mike Dowis coming on for his 20, what would be his 24th. It is 24th consecutive point after Mike attempt. Dallas, point after and attempt. Georgia Southern... Here early in the second quarter, jumps out in front by three touchdowns over the visiting James Madison Dukes. Darrell Hopkins getting attention on the sideline. A junior from Bishop, Georgia, throwing a block for Raymond Gross down in that corner. Eagles out in front by those three touchdowns. They've been in command, establishing that on the first offensive play of the game for the Eagles. Raymond Gross, th two touchdown passes, and here running for the third touchdown of this game. And a good job by Gross stretching the ball in. He really wanted that touchdown, and he deserved it. He was the big playmaker on that very, very good Georgia Southern drive. The enthusiastic Eagle football fans here at Paulson Stadium up on their feet for Don Norton's fourth kickoff of the day. Tom Green waiting at his 14. Loose ball, falls on it. Big hit, but it looks like Tom Green recovers for the James Madison Dukes. Well, here we are early in the second quarter. It has been a habit of James Madison's offense to relieve Eric Williams with Tom Green in the second period, but Williams trots back out. We've seen two tremendous running quarterbacks. Raymond Gross capping off the last drive. Seven plays, 45 yards. Only three minutes needed to polish that drive off. Eric Williams takes over at the 11. Fullback hammering forward, Willie Lanier, the fullback. It's quite a story. You recognize the name if you recognize football. His father, Willie Lanier. Big number 66, a linebacker for the Kansas City Chiefs, a Hall of Famer. I think of Willie Lanier, I think of those three linebackers that played on that Chiefs team. W Willie, Jim Lynch, number 51, and Bobby Bell, big number 78, a real pioneer of those big outside rush linebackers that we see today. How long ago was that, Phil? Way back when we were kids. No, 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 I, <laughs> I wasn't back there. <laughs> Just this past fall, a couple months ago, Buck Buchanan was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame off that Kansas City team. I think of those old AFL games with Kurt Gowdy and Al DeRogatis doing those broadcasts. Willie was actually not a highly recruited fullback coming out of high school at Benedictine in, Vir in Richmond, Virginia. That's a private school, and he was kind of smallish and not very well recruited. Eric Williams, Eric Williams maybe a gain of two, brought down by middle linebacker Nick Davis, the freshman. In fact, Willie, when he came out of high school, about 215, 220 pounds, he redshirted, put on 20 pounds, got the scholarship, they plugged him into the lineup. Willie is coming off a couple of weeks where he has not had good health.
Well, Chip Ferguson, our referee, having a little bit of difficulty with his microphone. We'll get that corrected for you here before halftime. 11 minutes remaining in the second. Williams operating on first down from deep in his own territory. The Dukes trail by three touchdowns already here in the first half. Now we'll get that clock going. We talked about Willie the near field. Uh, we haven't seen him quite as much as we thought we might have so far. Mostly, James Madison's offense has been the production of Eric, the quarterback. 11 carries, 80 yards. You bet that's production. Eric Williams, excuse me. Williams rolling, has Hayes. Complete. And Nick Davis gets a fistful of jersey and drags him down at the 23-yard line. Maybe they spot it at the 25. Davis brings him down shy of the first down. And when Williams isn't doing it on the ground, he's doing it via the air, and he's going to predominantly Dwayne Hayes, who is doing that little curl-in route. And you think that maybe they can try to break it off here. Of course, they tried to do it earlier and got picked off, but that's no reason not to go back to it. That was because the ball was underthrown on that particular play. A year ago, both Williams and Lanier rushed for over 100 yards against the Georgia Southern defense. Lanier spinning. Powerful run up to the 30. First down for James Madison. A gain of five. Lanier, the ball carrier. And four or five Georgia Southern players got to experience that 20-pound that uh, Lanier put on back about a year ago because he really ran tough on that play. Some accommodations were provided by the Stadium Club Apartments, conveniently located adjacent to Allen Paulson Stadium. Four bedroom, two baths furnished and ready for the winter quarter. Limited number of apartments available, so call today for reservations. 912-681-2437. The Stadium Club Apartments at Georgia Southern, the students home away from home. Williams operating on first down, rolling and tucking it in. Shane Maxwell makes the hit. Maxwell fighting off the block and brings down Williams maybe after a gain of one. Williams sure is exciting to watch play. That's Patrick Parr, number 90, the big nose man, a junior out of Troop County, getting up and limbering off, lumbering off, hopping. He's favoring that right ankle. Officials time out to let Parr Get on off the field. That'll bring in Curtis Gordon, who's been enjoying an outstanding year. Gordon, a junior from Ellenwood, has four sacks so far this year. But Parr, an outstanding run, plays the run extremely well. He was a state champ, three-time state champ in wrestling at Troop County, which is a powerhouse in the state of Georgia. Eric Williams on second down. Paul Sickley. Fighting off the block of Mike Campbell, stacks him up. Rodney Oglesby strips the ball free, but not after the play had been blown dead. Flags are down. Eric Williams on the option. This is what you don't want to do. He throws the ball at his pitch man, who is not even looking. Derek, excuse me, not Derek McGrady. Leon Taylor wasn't even looking, and the ball luckily went out of bounds. I think that may be a forward motion, forward pass. Illegal forward pass on the offense. It's going to be five yards and lost it down. It's going to be third down. Not only was it an ill-advised pitch late in the play like that being dragged down, but it was, in fact, an illegal forward pass. Third down and ten. James Madison just not able to get into the rhythm of their offense. There's a timeout called by the Dukes. Eric Williams facing third and ten from his 32. The Dukes take a timeout, and we will, too. Eight minutes remaining in the first half from Statesboro. It's homecoming, a festive weekend at Georgia Southern University in Statesboro. And a near record crowd was still waiting for the final figures, but the largest regular season crowd to watch a game at Paulson Stadium, 24,000 a year ago against Tennessee Chattanooga. The largest crowd overall was last year in the championship game of the playoffs. Stephen Austin, Stephen F. Austin, 25,000. We're still waiting for the final tally, but it should be right up there. Eric Williams on third and ten. Thornton caught. First down, James Madison. Paul Sickley drifting back into coverage, makes the hit. A thud right in the ribs of Thornton, and he holds on. A tremendous job. That's a tough receiver to go across the middle. You always hate to hear that play call when you're going across the middle. But Thornton 
He's a tough kind of guy. He goes and says, simply, I'll take your best shot, and I'll still catch this ball. That's what it's all about, about being a receiver. I know. <laughs> Thornton at the top of the screen, Hayes at the bottom. Williams runs right into Mark Giles, right into the grasp of Giles, falls forward for a gain of five. Ball spotted at the 49 in Georgia Southern Territory. You know, Williams has really done a pretty good job of running the offense, but we talked about him earlier as far as being inconsistent. And that's what has exactly happened so far in this game. That's how you defense the option. You stick a man on the end, an extra man, it looked like, for Georgia Southern over there. And Eric Williams did not see him and ran a right flat into him. What Georgia Southern might be doing so far in defending the run better than James Madison's defense is getting pursuit from the linebackers. Williams on second down, getting pressure. Has Thornton complete up to the 18-yard line. Beautiful catch. Nice throw by Eric Williams for a gain of 35. Jim Mutimer makes the tackle. You see Williams goes out right. They've been going to Dwayne Hayes most of the day. Now the last two plays, they've gone to Thornton, and he's done a good job. He's responded. If that ball is thrown on time, Thornton runs down the sideline for an easy touchdown. There you look at it again. Williams, a nice strike. It could have been a little bit more thrown with the lead, and that would have led to a touchdown. But nevertheless, Williams did get the ball, and it was a good game for James Madison. The Dukes hustled up to the line of scrimmage, working without a huddle, which they have done in the past. And that's why Georgia Southern's defense, caught in a different kind of down and distance circumstance, called timeout. What a glorious afternoon for anything. Certainly a beautiful day for football. I can only picture someone up in the Midwest <laughs> <laughs> thinking Big Ten football and what it's like in the first weekend of no November. Beautiful weather all over the nation today, but then seeing a game like this where shorts and short sleeves and short pants are the order of the afternoon, 80 degrees, sunshine, and a little bit of lotion. Well, I, I might consider being on the golf course right now, but I, I, of course I love Georgia Southern. I'd rather be here golf course is my second choice and uh pretty soon i'm getting good phil i mean i may be going on a pga tour soon hey you want to be my caddy <laughs> does that deserve an answer <laughs> first down at the 18 746 remaining in the first half williams dragged down by steve busoletti busoletti trailing on the play eric williams on a gain of two Usuletti, a good job of fighting off the block that time and getting enough of Eric Williams. And that's hard, getting enough of Eric Williams because he is so small and he is so quick. Usuletti did a good job that time. James Madison, a team that responds in the second period, and here they are with their best drive of the day. Williams straight ahead on a quick snap. Not much there. Nick Davis and Pat Parr, check that, Tim Brown, number 94, about the only two involved on the defense, and Williams in his center. Shellhammer, the only two involved on the offense. That was an odd delay count. But I think Williams saw something in the middle where maybe Georgia Southern was playing their gaps a little bit farther apart and decided he'd take the handoff and try to sneak it up the middle, and uh, it just didn't work. Two interceptions, 88 yards in the passing so far. Eric Williams. As Hayes at the nine, the five, touchdown, James Madison. Nice throw from Eric Williams in a dandy run, eluding the Georgia Southern defensive backfield. Jim Mutimer was there, had a hand on him, or tried to get a hand on him, and now the Duke's down by a pair of touchdowns. We talked about Dwayne Hayes running that little curl pattern. There he is, running it again. It's been effective, why go away from it? And then Hayes does a good job of cutting back inside and scoring the touchdown. Credit the wide receivers, both Dwayne Hayes and Keith Thornton on that drive, making it successful. Mike Renoso comes on for the extra point. Out of the hold of Hunter Scott Todd, and it's good. Six and a half minutes remaining in the first half, and James Madison right back in this thing. They're on the board. Still trailing by 14. Some athletes want to believe they can make plays like this no matter what condition they're in. But the truth is, they can't. It's a simple fact. 
drugs will destroy your talent. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. There's the head eagle, Kirk Russell. He put this program together. Even coach the guy next to me. Let's take a look at this receiver at work from a receiver. Court on the curl pattern, you have got to find that seam. He did so and then made a very good run after. And that's something that's very important. You have receivers who can make the catch but can't run with the ball afterwards and find a seam to get into the end zone. Court, uh, excuse me, Dwayne Hayes did a very good job that time. And Eric Williams, Dwayne Hayes, and Keith Thornton Seem to be the only three people playing on that drive for James Madison, but you know there was some other stuff going on. Some good blocking by the offensive line as well. Renezzo hustling, hustling up to the ball has been a habit by James Madison. That's design. They do that often. Back deep for Georgia Southern is Carl Miller at his one. Georgia Southern has the fourth best kickoff return unit in the nation. Miller downs it in the end zone. Renezzo had that Stiff, stiff breeze at his back. On that scoring drive, James Madison going the long way. 84 yards on nine plays in five minutes. Eric Williams finding something that works. He's working on the ground, and Dwayne Hayes, that big six foot, six inch junior split in, going to work against the cornerbacks, both of whom for Georgia Southern size up at five foot ten. Rodney Oglesby and Kevin Whitley. Quite a size disadvantage there. Gross looking for Sorrell again. Upton Jackson, senior safety. Pass intended for Terrence Sorrell. Along with Sorrell, and nicely played by Upton Jackson. James Madison, a second quarter ball club. Now I keep picturing them holding up two fingers like other teams do four <laughs> in the fourth. Look like a 60s demonstration. Here's the passing yard so far in this ball game. James Madison moving in the air. Georgia Southern moving basically on two big plays. The two touchdown bombs, 54 yards and 30 yards by Raymond Gross. Second down, Lester Eford pushing the pile forward for a gain of four. Brian Lewis, the defensive end, makes the tackle. The strength of James Madison's defense those two tackles, Jermel Harris and Ferris Bayhead, who was knocked out of this game. Lewis comes in. He's a 260-pound senior from Forestville, Maryland. The two tackles and the safety, the man who we just saw, Upton Jackson. Jackson getting a strong look by the NFL scouts. Gross, three of seven so far. Getting pressure. Comes it off. Almost picked off. Grievous, Richard Grievous, the strong safety, had a hand on it. That'll bring up fourth down, and that'll bring on Terry Harvin, the punter for Georgia Southern. An ill-advised pass that time by Raymond Gross. He just luckily got away with it because Grievous had that big hand up there, and he wanted to snag it and go the other way. Harvin getting pressure by Jackson, but gets it off. Nice high floater. Anthony Archer, fair catch on the run at the 44. 534 remaining in the first half. Harvin, a senior from Keystone Heights, Florida, having an All-American kind of season. Not necessarily for his average. He just excels at that high, tight spiral, angling it at the cup and corner. In fact, he's dropped 13 of his 45 boots leading up to today inside the 20. Excellent field position for the James Madison offense. Williams, nice ball fake. Mike West got around Williams' ankles at the 48. But Williams lunges forward to the Georgia Southern 48. Gain of eight on the pickup. Eric Williams on the option. I am really impressed with him. He even knows how to do the ball thing uh, that Raymond Gross and Tracy Ham before him made so popular. Eric Williams doing a tremendous job today other than two uh, pretty bad plays as far as, far as the interception is concerned. We just didn't see the man. He has really had a pretty good day. Second down and two. Pullback, Lanier. 
first down for James Madison. That's just headstrong football. Give Smith in on the tackle, among others, Patrick Parr and Mike West. What is that? For Bill? Georgia Southern. What is that? It's not the grip the crime dog. I know him. I've met him on several occasions. <laughs> That's the big dog. Okay, the big dog. Our producer tells us from the truck, that's the big dog. Williams keeping. Mike West quickly pursuing down the line of scrimmage. Tackles Williams, but not before Eric Williams picks up two. Second down and eight. If you are a linebacker, this is what it looks like. Eric Williams coming at you, you know he can go left he can go right, and he can do it in a hurry. So it's kind of scary for you. But a good job by Georgia Southern that time of stopping Williams at the line. 5'11", 150 pounds that he can produce. Second down and eight. Williams on the draw. Paul Sickley with a sure tackle at the ankles of Williams, but not before he squirts forward for a gain of nine. And another James Madison first down. And Williams making a very smart decision there. It was just a quick pop pass to his halfback, Leon Taylor. But Leon Taylor is covered. So when Leon Taylor is covered, Eric Williams takes off and gains the first down. Really making some heads up play right now. Some heads up plays, that is. Williams runs a 4-4, 40-yard dash. Outstanding speed. Give Smith defenses Hayes. They go to Thornton. Nice check off. Another first down by James Madison. Eric Williams looking like he has operated this offense all his life. Looked for Dwight, Dwayne Hayes rather. On the quick pop, it's not there. Giff Smith, you see, gets penetration and defenses out there. So he goes to a secondary receiver for a first down. And we've seen in the past, Bill, that Georgia Southern has had problems on defense with the crossing patterns, the curls, the posts. And that's exactly what James Madison is doing to Williams dropped for a loss of three by Giff Smith. Smith, the two-time All-American, and he gets it done with quickness. Sizes up at 6'1", 230 pounds. But, man, he gets off that line of scrimmage. Giff Smith fights off the block, and he is just there. A good heads-up play. That's what his job is, and that's what he did. Mapleton, a suburb west of Atlanta. After falling behind by three touchdowns, James Madison responding with a touchdown pass with six minutes remaining in the second, and now with two and a half minutes remaining before halftime, Dukes on the drive. A flag down. Williams. Indecisive, running or throwing, and that pass incomplete. Dwayne Hayes, the man for whom that ball was intended, Darius Dawson, a freshman linebacker from Moultrie, Georgia, out defending on Eric Williams. Offsides against Georgia Southern. That's gonna hurt, that would have brought up third down and about 14. Well, Chip Ferguson having some problems with his microphone. We'll try to get that worked out here at halftime. Second down and eight. Ball on the 15-yard line. Two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Lanier, second effort. Bounces off the stack and brought down by Michael Berry, the junior linebacker from Harper High School in Atlanta. Good job by Lanier. He looked as if he was stacked up at the line for no gain. But a little spin move, he puts that heavy body on top of some of the Georgia Southern defenders and rolls off for two or three yards. Good play by Willie Lanier. Lanier not highly recruited coming out of Benedictine High School in Richmond, Virginia because of that. It's a private school and plays in a league that's not very competitive. But he has improved, and he's a load at 245 pounds. Williams to Hayes at the eight. First down, James Madison at the five-yard line. Darius Dawson, the outside linebacker, in on the stop, along with Nick Davis and Kevin Whitley, the cornerback. James Madison marching down the field. This game, 
suspiciously close to last year's game when James Madison took a big lead and James Madison, uh, Georgia Southern uh, came back on them. There's the little curl pattern. We said they're going to do that little inside route. They haven't stopped it yet, so why go away from it? First down at the five. Wishbone fumbles. Williams is down. They're going to blow the knee down. Chip Ferguson, the referee, spots the ball at the seven-yard line. Mark Giles, the safety, makes the tackle on Williams, but they'll mark it back at the seven. Goal line defense in transition and out on the field. That brings in Patrick Parr, the nose man. Joe Persicki's offense moving right now. Timeout by Georgia Southern. Eagles want a timeout to take a look at this stop. Inside the 10, we're with one minute remaining in the first half. A sun-splashed crowd at Allen Paulson Stadium on homecoming in Statesboro. At halftime, we'll have the presentation the announcement of the homecoming queen. We'll also have a presentation for the Georgia Southern baseball team. Jack Stallings Club advanced to the College World Series a year ago. Had that big right-hander, Joey Hamilton, coming back. They ought to be formidable once more. Eric Williams, second down. Knocking on the door, Lemire. Banging forward, tackle by Patrick Parr along the front of the offense, or defense, rather. Check that. Parr and Steve Busoletti in there as well. Only three backs have rushed for over 100 yards against the Georgia Southern defense this year. Mark Giacone of Central Florida, Eastern Kentucky's Marcus Thomas, who's probably the leader right now for the Walter Payton Award, and Sean Jackson back in that demolition at Florida State. I guarantee you over there on that James Madison sideline, they're saying, I don't think we're going to be able to score on them via the run. They're probably talking about some type of play-action pass right now. Or maybe they're talking about a happy birthday. I don't know. <laughs> at least they didn't say, hi, Mom. <laughs> Third down at the five, third down and goal. We talked about only three runners have been over the century mark this year. Eric Williams already has 90 yards and expect them to try to isolate Williams out on the roll, out of the pocket. And look for that big six foot, six inch junior receiver, Dwayne Hayes. And you could also see here, Phil, a live pass since Dwayne Hayes has so much of a height advantage over the defensive backs for Georgia Southern. Just let him run into the corner and lob it up and let Dwayne Hayes go up and get it. 58 seconds remaining in the half. Williams cutting up to the two yard line. That brings up fourth down and let's see where that spot is. Fourth down maybe at the one. Paul Sickley makes the touchdown saving tackle. Well, we see your basic chess mass match by the coaches. Georgia, Georgia Southern defensive coaches called timeout on third down. Timeout, James Madison. Now James Madison wants timeout to see what they can do with fourth and how many inches here. And there was a the little rollout. The isolation you said, Phil, you were right on the nose there, and he almost got in. Pretty good call by the James Madison coaching staff over there. Tony DeMio with the headset on. Joe Perzicki next to him with the headset on as well, talking with Eric Williams and talking it over in front of his bench. An overflow crowd, 4,000 extra seats. The temporary bleachers brought into Allen Paulson Stadium today. Field goal unit coming on, and I don't think a lot of the players on the offensive line are really happy. They think they can get it over. There's Eric Williams, the nice move there, the nice cut back against the grain, and if it wasn't for Mark Giles, he would have gotten in for the touchdown. When you got a great player like Eric Williams, it sure makes things so much better when you're down around the five-yard line. You have so many different options. Ball spotted at the two. Chris Shellhammer, the snapper. Scott Todd, the punter, is the holder. He's a former quarterback. Mike Granizzo with a 24-yard attempt. Chip shot is up. 
and good. And with 38 seconds remaining in the first half, James Madison locks into that big 21-yard deficit, now down 21 to 10. So the Dukes assured of coming out of there with at least three. They're moving the ball, though, and that's the plus for them as they head into halftime. Georgia Southern will get the ball back with 38 seconds remaining in the first half. And I'm sure a big reason why Coach Joe Brzezicki and his coaching staff decided to go for the field goal because of Georgia Southern's history of playing so tough when they get around the five-yard line. As you look at my former head coach, Herb Russell, signing a few autographs please don't blow his head up anymore please please stop <laughs> well as we look ahead to halftime coach Perzicki and his team have accomplished one thing they're moving the ball at the same time since Georgia Southern put up three touchdowns they've slowed down the Eagle offense and in fact Raymond Gross scoring on quick strikes the long bombs 54 yards to Terrence Sorrell Coming back again on the second offensive possession of the first quarter, 30 yards to Sorrell. Raymond Gross also has a four-yard touchdown run. Raymond accounting for all three scores. Prediction, they won't kick the ball to Carl Miller here, I guarantee you. Renuso. Don Hudson at the 19, 30. Puts his head down up to the 35-yard line. Clock is stopped with 32 seconds remaining. Pat Carey, a strong safety, makes the tackle. Well, let's see what Raymond Gross, well, let's see who's hobbling off for Georgia Southern. That's Nick Derashensky, a defensive tackle who works on the special teams. Got his arm around Donnie Suber. Looks like he's favoring the right knee. 32 seconds with Georgia Southern's quick strike offense. That's a long time. Seems like an eternity probably for James Madison. I don't think Georgia Southern will sit on this ball. Terrence Sorrell at the bottom of the screen. Daryl Hopkins in a slot. Straight ahead. Joe Ross for a gain of six. Lock on the move with 23-22. Gross looking for Hopkins. Out of bounds at midfield. Richard Grievous ushers him out. Stops the clock with 13 seconds remaining. David Cool handles the long field goals for Georgia Southern. Mike Granizzo capping off the last scoring drive for the Dukes. 12 plays, 54 yards, consuming only 356. From midfield, Raymond Gross with 13 seconds remaining in the first half. As Miller caught at the 42, clock at six seconds remaining, and timeout by Georgia Southern. The tackle by Richard Grievous. David Cool has attempted a 57-yard field goal this year. It had the distance, but was not accurate. Raymond Gross, the straight drop back. He's looking over to the sideline, either Carl Miller or his other receiver out there. And Carl Miller does a tremendous job of turning his body in the air and making the grab. Carl Miller, a tremendous athlete. We talked about him before. He does it all for Georgia Southern. He can block. He can run. He can catch the passes, as you just saw on this play. And you'll see it again. Raymond Gross, the straight drop back, out to the sideline. Carl Miller, did you see the athletic ability? I turn his body in the air. Boy, he reminds me of somebody. I'm not taking that. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Miller, very active on the field and off the field. He's one of the few married players for Georgia Southern, and he's also a father of Carl III, two-year-old son. Here's Raymond Gross looking out of bounds to Sorrell with one second. No incomplete. Sorrell out of bounds. That'll back the ball up to the 43-yard line. I don't know if we'll be able to see it on the replay, but it looked as if Terrence Sorrell's lead foot came down out of bounds first. He did get one foot in bounds, but his lead foot comes down right there, out of bounds first, before he gets the other one down. That's why it was called a complete good call by the officials. David Cool, a former walk-on. 
will try a 59-yard field goal. Al Radford snaps, Terry Harvin on the hold. It's up and looks shy. Well short, just over the goal line, and that'll conclude the first half. Georgia Southern jumps out in front, 21 to nothing. James Madison comes back, and it's now 21 to 10 at halftime. We'll be back with homecoming halftime festivities from Statesboro. The Georgia Southern Band at halftime as we open up halftime festivities for this homecoming Saturday on the first weekend in November in Statesboro. What a beautiful afternoon for football. And what we're seeing here, Delano, is a duel between two quarterbacks, two electrifying quarterbacks. Raymond Gross dueling in the air with his part, and Eric Williams of James Madison doing it on the ground, also throwing for the touchdown pass. So let's rehash this first half here. Georgia Southern jumping out in front on the very first time they touch the ball, the very first play. Raymond Gross looks for who? Terrence Sorrell, who had not caught a touchdown pass all year. That's right. They talk about Terrence Sorrell as being Georgia Southern's only deep threat, and he certainly proved it on that first play that Georgia Southern touched the ball. Raymond Gross, the straight drop back. Terrence Sorrell, a pretty move on the outside, thanking the defensive back, and he was wide open. He did it twice. He did it on the Georgia Southern Eagles' next possession, breaking open another tremendous move, and Raymond Gross finding him along the sideline. And you don't think of Georgia Southern, most people don't, as a passing team. They think of them as running. And here Georgia Southern comes on the first play of the ball game. They touch it. You expect the option. That's what you've been working on all week long. And go on, they throw the football. A touchdown pass. Well, let's, Unbelievable. Let's take a look at one of those touchdown passes. Raymond Gross opens up on his first play from scrimmage. 54 yards to Sorrell, who's from Salem, New Jersey. And... Terrence Sorrell schools defensive back Robert Smart, who's from nearby Clio, Georgia. Smart from right near Georgia Southern. Sorrell from up there around New Jersey, Salem, New Jersey, where James Madison does a good bit of its recruiting. So the Eagles jump out 21 to nothing. Then Eric Williams, operating that multi-bone that James Madison calls it, brings his team right back, and for the first time in the game, middle of the second period, they start establishing that offensive attack. Well, Eric Williams really playing a tremendous ball game. He had a couple of problems earlier with the interception, but uh, he really got this drive going by hitting Dwayne Hayes over the middle. Dwayne Hayes and Ed Thornton. Let's not forget about him. Keith Thornton, that is. And Dwayne Hayes, a tremendous job of getting the ball in the end zone. More halftime half activities from Statesboro after this. An overflow crowd at Allen Paulson Stadium in Statesboro here at halftime. Homecoming on the campus of Georgia Southern, and now time to crown the homecoming queen. The public address announcer at Allen Paulson Stadium is Gail Mino. 20 semifinalists were nominated for this year's homecoming queen. On Wednesday, October 24, the Georgia Southern student body voted from among these 20 young ladies to choose the six members of the 1990 homecoming court. At this time, we will present the court members to you. Dee Dee Davis is a 21-year-old junior majoring in early childhood education. She's from Lawrenceville, Georgia, and enjoys twirling and spending time with friends. Dee Dee is currently captain of the Southern Majorette Line and is nominated by Delta Chi Fraternity. Dee Dee is escorted by her father, Johnny Davis. Gina Hatcher is from Dublin, Georgia, and is majoring in free pharmacy. She's a 21-year-old senior who enjoys tennis and aerobics, and she is a member of Alpha Delta Pi sorority. Gina is nominated by Sigma Alpha Epsilon Fraternity and is escorted this afternoon by her brother, Reggie Hatcher. Julie Kicklider is a 21-year-old senior majoring in public relations. She is from Brunswick, Georgia and enjoys dancing and aerobics. She is presently captain of the varsity cheerleading squad and is nominated by Sigma Chi Fraternity. Julie is escorted by Lee Kicklider, her father. Christy Long, a 21-year-old senior majoring in public relations, is from Warner Robins, Georgia. She enjoys tennis and walking and is a member of the Public Relations Student Society of America. Christy is nominated by Phi Mu Sorority and is escorted by her father, Mike Long. Go. Go. Michelle Middleton is a 21-year-old senior from Sylvester, Georgia. Her major is child psychology and she enjoys sports and collecting antique dolls. 
She's a member of the Psychology Club and is nominated by Kappa Delta Sorority. Michelle is escorted by Sonny Brothers. Go. Go. Angela Walton is a 21-year-old senior majoring in printing management. She's from Decatur, Georgia, and she enjoys cooking and shopping. Angela was a member of the 1990 orientation team and is nominated by the Minority Advi Ad Advisement Program. She's escorted by her father, Jesse Walton. And the 1990 Georgia Southern homecoming queen is Angela Walton. She's being crowned this afternoon by Dr. Nicholas Henry, president of Georgia Southern University, and Lee Fowler, 1989 homecoming queen. The Campus Activities Board wishes to congratulate the entire court and give its best wishes to Angela as our new queen. Congratulations to Miss Angela Walton from Decatur, Georgia. That's up near Atlanta. Let's take this network timeout. We're at halftime. Georgia Southern 21, James Madison 10. Congratulations to Angela Walton. We're at halftime at Allen Paulson Stadium between James Madison and Georgia Southern. These two teams find independent football programs and two outstanding football programs. In fact, both schools ranking well as up-and-comers recently in a survey by U.S. News and World Report. Let's take a look at James Madison University. <laughs> Advances in technology have made our world a smaller place. Today's graduate must function in a global society. At James Madison University, many programs emphasize global education, including studies abroad programs in England, France, Spain, and Italy. As our world shrinks, the JMU students' knowledge expands. Welcome back to Paulson Stadium. Just filing down here the last few minutes of halftime and some of the homecoming activities. Earlier we saw Angela Walton crowned homecoming queen for 1990 here in Statesboro. And now Jack Stallings and the Georgia Southern baseball team making its way out onto the field. They'll be honored for last year's trip to the College Baseball World Series. Once again, let's hear from public address announcer Gail Mino. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a very special recognition on this homecoming Saturday. Last spring, the Georgia Southern Eagle baseball team captured the hearts and admiration of many throughout Statesboro, Southeast Georgia, and the nation. Now assembling at the 40-yard line are coaching staff members and players from the 1990 NCAA Midwest Regional Champion GSU baseball team under the direction of head coach Jack Stallings. He completed the season with 960 career victories as the sixth winningest coach in Division I baseball. The 1990 Eagles tied or established 17 school records. GSU dominated the Trans-America Conference Eastern Division, winning 17 of 18 games. The Eagles then earned an at-large berth in the NCAA Midwest Regional at Wichita, Kansas, and defeated defending national champion Wichita State, UCLA, and South Alabama twice to advance to college baseball showcase event, the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. Georgia Southern finished the season ranked eighth nationally by collegiate baseball, 11th by Baseball America. Let's hear your cheers for the winningest baseball team in Georgia Southern history, the 50 and 19 Georgia Southern Eagles of 1990. At this time, Eagle head coach Jack Stallings is presenting certificates on behalf of the American Baseball Coaches Association to senior catcher Rob Fitzpatrick and freshman right fielder Todd Green. Fitzpatrick and Green were All-America selections by the ABCA. Coach Stallings is now giving the award to Statesboro's own Joey Hamilton. This trophy, awarded by the NCAA, is in recognition of Hamilton's 18 pitching wins last season. That figure was tops in all of college baseball. Thank you. 
field. Well, this crowd of about 20,000 here at Allen Paulson Stadium, not only appreciating the efforts of the football team, but as you can see and hear, appreciating homecoming here and Statesboro. Well, let's take this local timeout. We'll come back. We're at the tail end of the halftime. We'll be back with second half and statistics after this. Coming. The captains are at midfield. The team's ready to come back on the field for the second half. Tim Stowers and his Eagles leading 21 to 10 at halftime. Let's take a look at the Dixie Crystals Sugar scoreboard. Youngstown State unbeaten and out in front of the Ohio Bobcats at halftime. University of Massachusetts leading the Richmond Spiders in the second. Furman and William Men and Mary, big game. James Madison will take on Bill and Mare later this year. Boise State and Montana State still to kick off. Holy Cross tied with Bucknell at halftime. Jackson State playing Texas Southern later on tonight. Some other key games around the nation in Division 1A, of course, primary in our minds. Georgia Tech taking on Virginia. Both are undefeated, a key game in the ACC. And from the result of that game, the bowl picture will then fall into place for Division 1A. And in from this game today and from that William and Mary Furman game, much of the Division 1 AA playoff picture, the field of 16, will fall into place. Delano, let's take a look at some statistics from this first half. And what jumps out to me, we talked about how only three running backs have crossed the 100-yard mark all year. Eric Williams, the James Madison quarterback, already has 111 yards at halftime. And you know, traditionally, Georgia Southern has always had problems with those small quarterbacks, what we call jitterbugs, what we called earlier, that can really move to the right and left and put a move on you. And Williams has really been tough on Georgia Southern. Williams rushing for 111 yards, passing for 123. Look at the total yards, the turnovers, the two interceptions hurt, but look at that time of possession. Ooh, Over yes. double, nearly triple Georgia Southern. Joe Perzicki saying the two keys to this game, one, big plays. They have not prevented big plays by Georgia Southern, and two, time of possession. But certainly time of possession means very little when you have the two interceptions and in the two touchdown bombs by Raymond Gross. Mike Grinozzo set to kick it off for James Madison, and the second half is underway. Carl Miller at his one. The 10, 20, has a hole. 30, 35, 40. Up to the 39-yard line, Shane Henson and Richard Grievous. It was Henson, the linebacker, who got a hand on Carl Miller, preventing him from breaking that thing wide open. A flag down, back of the 18-yard line. Daryl Hopkins getting up woozy with his helmet off. There's a holding call against Georgia Southern. Carl Miller broke a 103-yard return against Central Florida down in Orlando, but that was called back as this fine return will come back. We got holding on the receiving team. Going to be first down. And now you know why most teams do not like to kick off to Carl Miller because he is so explosive. A couple of good blocks here on this return, but there you see blocking number six in the back in the lower corner of your screen. That was a clip. But Carl Miller is so dangerous. I don't think they'll be kicking him anymore the rest of the game. Raymond Gross ran for 44 yards, passed for 101 in the first half. Raymond Gross to Joe Ross. Outstanding play by Robert Smart. The cornerback who came up, fought off his blocker and dropped Joe Ross maybe for a loss of one. That was Brad Allman over there on the sideline, and he did a good job. That's where they work on a lot, fighting off those wide receivers. Excuse me, not Brad Allman. That was uh, Robert Smart. As a matter of fact, as we mentioned before from Clio, Georgia, did a good job that time of fighting off his blocker. And they work on that in practice a lot. Getting those hands out, getting separation is what the defensive backs talk about. He did a good job on that play. Here's referee Chip Ferguson. Got illegal procedure on the offense. It's declined. It's going to be second down. Georgia Southern has four penalties in the game. Two here right at the beginning of the third period. Puts Raymond Gross deep in his own hole on second down. Going to keep it and cut it up. Has room at the 15, the 20. First down for Georgia Southern. Brian Lewis, the defensive tackle in pursuit, gets Raymond Gross on the cutback. First down at the 23. 
Raymond Gross rolling out to his left. He sees some room back inside, and that's what he does so well, and he cuts it back, and he picks up that big gain for the first down. There you see him at the tail end of that play. Gross has 51 yards on seven carries. Joe Ross, nice fake, and Gross keeps it, and is dropped for a loss. Jermel Harris fires out, and he has company back there. What we've seen already is a little bit of fire from that James Madison defense. And you see Raymond Gross probably should have given the ball that time to Joe Ross. He was the open man in the option play. He made a mistake, and Jamil Harris was all over him. Harris and Tracy Harrod in the backfield. Second down and 13. Gross to Joe Ross. Again, good pursuit. Shane Henson, the linebacker, number 44 out there for... James Madison Henson is a junior from Germantown, Maryland, 220-pounder. Shane Visman also out there. And finally, the James Madison linebackers here early in the third quarter getting some pursuit. That brings up third down and seven. And this is a really big play for both teams. Georgia Southern needing desperately to get something started. And James Madison wanting to keep Georgia Southern from getting something started, wanting to get that ball back as quickly as possible. Sorrell and Belser at the bottom of the screen. Sorrell comes back, complete at the 39-yard line. First down for Georgia Southern. Chris Parrott makes the stop. Nice job by Sorrell on what we call the bend route. The curl route is when he would break it back to the inside. On this play, he takes it out towards the sideline. You push up about 16 yards up the field and come back as sharp as possible toward the ball. A good job by Terrence Sorrell. He can run the long routes. He can run the short routes, too. Parrott, a converted safety. Right back to the fullback. Good offensive line Joe surge. Ross. Joe Ross, gain of about six. Shannon Visman, the top tackler on the Dukes defense, brings him down. Chris Parrott, a converted safety, playing that left corner because the two starting cornerbacks, Don Phelps and John Gutter, have been knocked out of action the past two weeks. Parrott also the cousin of Dukes linebacker Tracy Harrod. Second down and five. Chuck McClurg split it to the top of the screen with Sorrell. Gross wide pitch to Joe Ross. Needs a block spinning away. A gain of five, maybe a first down. Let's check the spot. Richard Grievous out there. Acrobatic play by Raymond Gross on the pitch. It's spot, spotted shy of the first down. Third down and just inches. Do not try this at home. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Raymond Gross appears to be stopped, and look at the pitch he makes. He, he throws the ball back to Joe Ross, and Joe Ross does a good job of getting some extra yardage there. Tough running by Joe Ross. Gross pitches to Carl Miller. First down, knocked out of bounds. Shane Henson had a hand on Carl Miller before first down territory. There's a flag down. Henson had a hand on him, but... Couldn't bring him down shy of the first down. Let's see what the call is. This crew today made up of SEC officials, Southern Conference officials, and Chip Ferguson, our referee from the College Football Officials Association. Procedure. We had Chip there. <laughs> Go ahead, say it, Chip. We have Chip. We don't have it. I don't know. We have him. We don't have him. I tell you what, penalties are really killing Georgia Southern. If you remember the second drive that Georgia Southern had this afternoon, second down and one, they get called for an illegal procedure. They have to end up punting, and it could possibly happen on this down. Third down and six. Gross has time. Belser. Crowd urging on interference. It looked like Robert Smart hit Belser early, but he was also competing for the football. That brings up fourth down, and that'll bring on senior punter Terry Harvin. There you see Raymond Gross rolling right. He looks back left. That's a good job by Raymond Gross looking off the receivers, and uh, it looked like it was just a good time play there by the defensive back. Harvin on a hop, gets pressure, and gets it off. Anthony Archer on the run at the 26. 30, hemmed in. And he goes down at the 33-yard line. 
Al Radford, the snapper from Lincoln County High School in Lincolnton, Georgia, down there to make the catch. 11 minutes remaining in the third period. We'll come back to Statesboro after this timeout. What you want. James Madison falling behind 21-0 in the first half, bouncing back, scoring the last 10 of the first half, and now the Dukes have the ball right back, and they have it in excellent field position at the 34-yard line. First down and 10. Joining us now for a little bit of conversation here in the third quarter from Statesboro is Jack Stallings, the Eagles baseball head coach. We'll talk to him a little bit as Eric Williams brings the Dukes up to the line on first down. Keeps the ball. Williams lunging forward for a gain of three. Tackle made by Mike West, the middle linebacker. Williams had that hot finish. Or check that. Williams did have a hot finish to the first half, and he comes out and keeps it. There's a flag down, personal foul against the Eagles. While well, they march this off, Jack, welcome to the broadcast booth. Have a dead ball. Personal foul. Welcome to the broadcast booth, and congratulations on the halftime ceremony. Congratulations on last year. The key question, can you do it again? Can you go back to the College World Series? Well, we certainly hope so. We have a lot of our players back. Uh, most of the pitching, uh, we lost most of the pitching, but we do have uh, the majority of our ball club back, and we're certainly looking for another good year and hopefully another trip back to Omaha. Williams in first down in Georgia Southern Territory at the 47. Inside delay handoff, Sparksman, the fullback, busting up loose ball, but whistled down. Paul Sickley makes the hit and the tackle. A bit of trickery and deception by James Madison. That's that old Statue of Liberty. Williams gives the reverse handoff to Sparksman, the redshirt freshman, and he heads right up. Paul Sickley stays home, the backside linebacker, and along with help from Darius Dawson makes the tackle, but not after a gain of six. From the wishbone, Taylor. Leon Taylor leaping into the pile, perhaps for a gain of one. Michael West, the middle linebacker from Roswell, Georgia, makes the stop, and he's out barking at his defense, trying to fire him up. Third down and four. Let's talk about your pitching, Jack. Joey Hamilton from right here in town. I'll tell you what, hang on for this key third down. Williams hangs on. First down and 10 for James Madison. Pick up of four. Tackle made by Darius Dawson, the freshman linebacker. Let's talk about your pitching. Outstanding pitching. That's why you go into a place like Wichita, win the regional, beating Wichita State, the defending champs, and that's what wins games at the College World Series. How will Hamilton and the staff fare this year? Well, we lost our number two, three, and four starters from last year, but we do have Joey Hamilton back. Joey won five games as a freshman, won 18 games as a sophomore, and uh, we're certainly counting on him to to stabilize the uh, pitching staff, and if he can have a good year for us, uh, then we'll hopefully have a good year and go back uh, to the regional. First down at the 36. Williams to Leon Taylor on the counter. Gain of five. Tackle made by defensive tackle Tim Brown. Brings up second down. Mike West hobbled, testing that knee, the middle linebacker. He's a senior, and really the inspiration to this defense. He's out of there, and Nick Davis, a freshman from Griffin, is in. Second down. Williams, ball fakes. Complete to Mike Campbell. First down. Dukes on the drive. Gain of nine. Tackle made by Darius Dawson and Paul Sickley, the linebackers. Eric Williams, only a sophomore, but watch him direct this offense and direct his receiver, Mike Campbell, the halfback. One more question for you, Jack. Hang in there with us. First down, James Madison Dukes on the move. Williams keeps it. Paul Sickley stacks him up. Williams with a gain of two. 
Mark Giles, the safety, also involved in the tackle, as is Steve Busoletti. Joey Hamilton's a junior. Baseball players are eligible for the baseball draft as freshmen and then as juniors and seniors. If you don't get them before they get to college, you got to wait till the junior year. Will he go pro after this year? Well, it'll depend on uh, what he does and what the scouts think of him. From all indications, I think he'll be drafted very high and probably, if uh, conditions are right, probably will sign. A lead pipe cinch first rounder. I think so. Second down for Williams, getting pressure and going down. Nick Davis and Tim Brown combine on the sack. Curtis Gordon in there as well. That's that quickness of the Georgia Southern defense. Finally, good coverage on Keith Thornton. This might be a coverage sack as well. Williams has time initially. Then they start piling in. Brown and Gordon from their defensive tackle spots. Patrick Parr was hampered in that first half and injured. And now Brown and Gordon making their presence felt. Third down and 10 at the 23. Williams on the draw. Goes down. Tim Brown makes the play. Six foot three inch, 260 pound senior from Madison. Brown in on his fourth sack of the year. Alex Mash, the freshman from Thomasville, also there. Mike Granizzo, senior for James Madison, working on the stop, working on the spot at the 32 yard line. Our thanks to Jack Stallings of the Georgia Southern baseball team. A real legend down in these parts. We appreciate him stopping by. Granuzzo, 42-yard boot is up and good. Got through there sideways, just in the lower corner of the uprights. James Madison takes the ball on their initial drive, right down the field, boots the field goal, and now they trail 21-13. A sun-drenched homecoming crowd on hand at Paulson Stadium, the second largest regular season crowd in Paulson Stadium history. 21,067 today. Second largest regular season crowd and the third largest crowd in the history of Paulson Stadium. Mike Grinozo tees it up from the 35. The Dukes have fought back and they're right in this game, Delano, right back in this game. They certainly are. Eric Williams has done a tremendous job of directing the James Madison offense. Carl Miller at his one, in trouble on the near sideline. Up to the 15. Hit hard and brought down shy of the 20. Corey Roy, a defensive back, got down in there in a hurry and wrapped him up. That scoring drive, 42 yards, good field position, 10 plays. Five and a half minutes. Granuzzo, 42 yards, a wobbly boot that just got in there. They don't care how to get him over, just as long as you get him over. Credit Eric Williams with getting his team right back in this club and silencing this homecoming crowd. Raymond Gross to Hopkins. Dancing along the sideline, Shane Henson makes the tackle. Hopkins makes Shannon Visman miss. That's a gain of nine. Second down and one. Raymond Gross and Georgia Southern running to the short side of the field. You'll often see them do that. Daryl Hopkins does a good job of keeping his feet in bounds to pick up three or four more yards. Make that a first down and 10. A fortunate spot by Georgia Southern. Gross cutting up field. Cutting inside of Jermel Harris. Shane Henson brings him down, but not before Raymond Gross leans forward and dives for a gain of four. It's second down. And you know that play by Raymond Gross, sometimes the option looks as if it wasn't successful, but Raymond Gross really picked up three or four yards on that play, and for most teams, that's a good pickup. Sorrell at the bottom of the screen. Joe Ross pounding forward over nose man Cliff Pettis. Ferris Fayhead also in there involved in the tackle, and it's good to see Fayhead back in the lineup here in the second half. He was helped off in the first half of this ball game. Third down and four. Question is, does Georgia Southern stay on the ground with the option, maybe a counter option to the left, or do they try to go to the air? 
Joe Perzicki's defense responding here. Carl Miller split in the slot to the top of the screen. Raymond looks him off. Finds Hopkins across the 50, up to the 45-yard line. First down. Gain of 20 on the connection from Raymond Gross to Daryl Hopkins. Nice play that time. You very seldom see Georgia Southern go to that crossing back coming out of the backfield. But when they do, it can really hurt a team. Daryl Hopkins on a delay pattern. He's going the opposite direction. Most of the linebackers and defensive backs are going. They have to stop and come back. And Daryl Hopkins does a good job of running after making the catch. Ball fake. Sorrell incomplete. His feet were out of bounds as he dove for that pass. Upton Jackson, the senior strong safety for James Madison on the coverage. Terrence Terrell along the sideline, just trying to find a hole. He had cover two defense, which means the safety was up on him. The quarterback was back. All he had to do was get around the safety, find a little hole there. And he actually did that. The pass was a little low, and Terrell just couldn't hold on to it. Raymond Gross is a 54% passer, and that's exactly what he was in the first half, 6-4-11. And his first toss here in the second half on this drive, incomplete. Second down and 10. Raymond getting pressure. On the 40. Jane Henson, the linebacker, hustles up Raymond to make Gross, the stop, but not before Raymond Gross line. picks up about seven, bringing up third down and three. James Madison, a good time, a good job of uh, control on that play. Raymond Gross, when he gets outside like that and he starts scrambling, he can be dangerous. And James Madison came up, made the big play, and is forced third down and three. Wednesdays at 6 o'clock on Sports South Network, the Tim Stowers Show, Georgia Southern Football 90. That's Wednesdays at 6 o'clock on Sports South. Joe Ross, first down. Powers through the line. We heard the pads pop. Gain of six, tackled by linebacker Shane Henson for James Madison. Henson from Germantown, Maryland, a 220-pound linebacker. Joe Ross, the kind of player who can hurt you at any given moment. Did not have a particularly good first half. Only 23 yards, as a matter of fact. But something about Joe Ross, that when the time gets nitty gritty, he can't get you a first down and make the big play. Clock on the run, under three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Ross, bad pitch by Gross, and Joe jumps on him. Spot. Loss of nine, back to the 43-yard line. Ominous note for the Eagle offense. They needed a first down. They've accomplished that, hammering out a pair of first downs. Inside two and a half minutes remaining in the third period. We talked earlier about Georgia Southern, that drill they run, throw the ball on the ground and say, get it. And once again, it paid off. Joe Ross knew exactly what to do and cover up that ball. Second down and 20. Hopkins in motion. Sorrell has, Gross has time. This is Hopkins at the 30, at the 25, the 20. At the 20, 15 yard, picks the back up, Carl Miller. Down to the two, down to the one yard line. Oh my. But a penalty flag is back on the 30-yard line. I think they're going to call Daryl Belzer for a clip, but I tell you what, it really did not look as if he had gotten his man in the back. It looked like a clean block. We'll definitely have to take a look at this one again. Well, you called it, Delano. The crowd's not happy about it. That's going to back the Eagles up even further. You got clipping on the offense. Still going to be second down. Wildest play of the game. Raymond Gross finds. Let's take a look and see if we can There you go, Phil. Darrell Hopkins running. That's it. He gets the man in the front. And that's what you call a legal block. That was not a clipping penalty. Georgia Southern definitely hurt by that call. Fans have every reason to be a little upset. Yeah. 21,000 here in Paulson Stadium. Not very happy with that call, but things happening so quickly at that point. Difficult to tell. Inside handoff, Carl Miller. Smelled out perfectly. Ferris Bayhead, the defensive tackle, making the stop. Also there, Tracy Harrod. 
Let's take a look, and you can see a replay of that last play. There is the head, and now you can see it. As we slow it down, our crack staff, our crack camera win. Tremendous job. That was a clip. I stand corrected. Let's credit our producer, Dan Shoemaker, with picking that one out. And let's also credit the officials with an excellent call what? on the wildest play of the game and a fast-developing play. Third down and 22. Raymond Gross from midfield. Has time. Hopkins. First down, Georgia Southern. Darrell Hopkins turning and looking right back into the sun, fighting off the sun and his defender, Shannon Bisman, the middle linebacker, and making the play of the game so far for Georgia Southern. When Rome sometimes Phil, you do as the Romans do. James Madison has been hurting Georgia Southern across the middle, and the past couple of plays that Georgia Southern has been successful on has been across the middle. Gross in the last minute of the third. Ad libs and goes down. Jermel Harris, defensive tackle, a senior, makes the stop. Richard Bryant, the outside linebacker from Washington, Pennsylvania, also in on the stop. Bryant is a good one at 6'2", 230 pounds. Gain of two by Raymond Gross on the scramble. Darrell Hopkins and Carl Miller are just like brothers there in that slot back position. They almost look exactly alike bookends, and they're very strong as well. We talked about them being on the Iron Eagle Club in Central Florida. They can lift about 5% of their body weight. That is truly amazing, Phil. It really is. I told you earlier when I was in college, all I wanted to pump was gas. Not Shannon weights. Fisman, the middle linebacker. 21 seconds remaining in the third period. Want to pass a, load to a, a note along to our network stations as we enter the final seconds of the third that we understand that we are behind on our commercial breaks and we will make them up as we go along here in the final period of the ball game. Chance Ward and Terrence Finley, a pair of backup receivers, split to the bottom of the screen. Finley in the slot on second down and eight. Gross. Brought down by Ferris Fayhead after a gain of two. Running to that short side of the field. Gross trying to make something happen by cutting forward, and Delano, he was holding the ball loosely. Well, that's the end of the third period. We've got a ball game. Let's take this network timeout on the Georgia Southern Sports Network. And what you want as the flyer is you want first class. A field goal on the board in the third period, but James Madison fighting from behind, trailing now 21 to 13. We want to alert our stations down the line that the next break, the next break will be local break number 19. Georgia Southern facing a third down and eight at the 14 yard line. Terrence Sorrell. Daryl Belser, the starting split ends, are back in there. Sorrell to the top of the screen. Daryl Hopkins, a slot back, also in the slot at the top of the screen, along with Carl Miller, the tight A back. Reverse pivot. Gross, nothing doing, he stopped. Roger Waters, the middle linebacker, converted from a quarterback. Passed for six touchdowns a year ago. Roger Waters, the senior, makes the stop. That brings on Mike Dallas for the field goal team. He's seven of nine this year. And we talked about Raymond Gross holding the ball loosely. Look, a loaf of bread. That's it. You don't want to get away from here without picking up any further points. Terry Harvin spots it at the 20. Dallas' boot. Looks good and is. Tight to the near side, but it gets through the uprights. Eagles answer the field goal in the third period by James Madison with three more of their own. Let's take this local timeout. 14 minutes remaining in the ball game. This is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. There, and James Madison gets it, goes down and score. They can score two points to tie the ball game at 21. Now they have to score twice. Eric Williams has Keith Thornton at the 23. Nice hit by Kevin Whitley, stacked up, and then a pack of blue arrives. Darius Dawson. Right there after Whitley cracked him on initial impact. 
Talk about some other football here today. Top-ranked Eastern Kentucky just underway, leading Austin P. 7-0 in the second. A little hitch pass out to Thornton, and Kevin Whitley does a good job of defensing it. They tried it earlier in the ball game, and he defensed it, and this time he does it again. 68 yards on 14 time-consuming plays, leading to the Mike Dallas 30-yard boot. Second down for Eric Williams. He has time. That time evaporates in a hurry. Alex Mash and Jack Harris credited with the sack. A mash bash. <laughs> Alex Mash, the freshman from Thomasville, is, man, is he quick. Mash bash. Oh, boy. Look at uh, Eric Williams as he goes back. He has, it looks like, an awful lot of time. And then all of a sudden, he sees no receivers. And the pocket all of a sudden becomes just a little bit smaller. Jack Harris, a six-foot-one-inch senior from Miami, takes the long way here by way of Bemidji State up in Minnesota. Third down and 12. Williams eludes Mash. Looking for McLeod, incomplete. Darius Dawson and Rodney Oglesby give a stick to David McLeod. And Eric Williams did a good job that time of avoiding the rush. His pass just a little too tall. He kind of reminds me of Randall Cunningham for the Philadelphia Eagles of how he can avoid that rush and get open and buy his receiver some time. He had the man open. He just threw it a little too tall. Scott Todd, high snap from his five, getting pressure. Low liner. Rodney Oglesby going to let it roll dead. And it will. Pat Carey downs it at the 40-yard line. Scott Todd, very fortunate to get that thing off. Let's take a timeout with 12 minutes remaining. Georgia Southern leading James Madison in the fourth period. Georgia Southern University, our tradition of excellence, our quality of life, our spirit and pride, have made us one of the fastest growing campuses in the nation. The momentum of the campus continues to grow along with Southern's reputation for academic excellence. The quality of life enjoyed at this mid-sized university compares with the best in the South. So for a great education in an ideal setting, we're Georgia Southern University. The sunshine today, very welcome to all but maybe one. <laughs> of the 21,000 fans here at Allen Paulson Stadium. First Saturday in November, a month which has been extremely kind to the Georgia Southern Eagles. In fact, they have not lost a game in the month of November for five years. But if you believe in omens, the last team to beat Georgia Southern in the month of November was James Madison back in 1985. Raymond Gross takes over first and 10 at the 40. Lester Eford pushing forward for a gain of four. Defensive coordinator, co-defensive coordinator, Tommy Spengler working with the defense. They did a good job that time of holding the James Madison Dukes. Bring you up to date on a couple of scores. Virginia jumps out in front of Georgia Tech 13 to seven in the first quarter. Florida State laying it on South Carolina 41 to three. Second down, Joe Ross. Following Parrish for a gain of two, Richard Bryant, outside linebacker, makes the stop for James Madison. Lester Eifert and Joe Ross alternating. That was Lester Eifert that time as he breaks up through the middle and does a good job of keeping his knees hot, getting that extra yardage. Lester Eford is a cousin of James Brooks, the splendid running back for the Cincinnati Bengals. Raymond Gross getting pressure, spinning loose from Jermel Harris and going down, maybe for a loss of one. And the Duke's defense responds. Georgia Southern comes in and does well on their defensive stop. And here comes James Madison and says, we're going to get you the ball right back off this. Now is your time to catch it and score. Terry Harvin off a hop again from Hal Rapper, getting pressure and getting contact, and a flag goes down. Anthony Archer dancing back at his 15, but will bring it on back. Ronald Johnson, a backup outside linebacker, makes initial contact in the stop, but Terry Harvin 
Chip Ferguson, the referee, makes the call, and here's a look at it. You see Terry Harvin, he's had some bad snaps a lot of times today, but this time it pays off for him because 44 for James Madison does a good Shane job. Henson. Shane Henson trying to block the punt, but he just gets blocked right into Terry Harvin. And of course, this will, this will give them the first down because there's only fourth and four. Well, that is a big play and a real backbreaker for Joe Persicki. He just threw down the program he had wadded up over on the opposite sideline. That's always the chance to take when you try to rush the punter and come up with a big play. Always got that chance of running into him or being blocked into him. Coach Perzicki claiming that Mike West, the up back, blocked Henson into Harvin. Gross cuts up field. Oh, the pitch. Joe Ross at the 35. And knocked out of bounds at the 30. Daryl Black is down, right? Daryl Belser looks like it will be called for a holding on Robert Smart, the cornerback. Actually, I think that time he, he flipped him again. Robert Smart did a good job of turning around. Sometimes those defensive backs can be very clever. And Daryl Belser is out there blocking him. And all of a sudden, Robert Smart turns his back, and the referee may have been looking at something else, then looks over and sees Daryl Belser blocking him in the back. That back is so inviting for wide receivers, I tell you. <laughs> 15 yards they march off. That hurts. Back into their own territory. And you see Raymond Gross as he cuts it up. Then he makes the tremendous pitch. You hate to see this call back. Joe Ross grabs the ball, and there you see him. He obviously got him in the back. Again, let's give the officials this afternoon credit with a call, an outstanding call, and an accurate call. Alonzo McGee in motion. Gross has time. As Carl Miller, nice cut, eludes at the 40, 35, still on his feet, up to the 30. Stopped by Upton Jackson, just shy of the first down. Gain of 24 yards. Raymond Gross to Carl Miller. And boy, has that delay pattern for Georgia Southern paid off dividends. You see Carl Miller breaking open there in the middle, the delay pattern, and then he does a tremendous job of running. Look at those quick feet. Look at him. He's going. There it is again. And you see him put a move on all sorts of individuals back at the defensive backfield. Carl Miller's fourth reception of the ball game. He leads the team. He is the leading receiver. Powering forward, Joe Ross met hard. You can hear the pads pop. That's the first down. Some accommodations were provided by the Stadium Club Apartments, conveniently located adjacent to Allen Paulson Stadium. Four bedroom, two baths furnished and ready for the winter quarter. Limited number of apartments available, so call today for reservations. Area code 912-681-2437. The Stadium Club Apartments at Georgia Southern. The students home away from home. First down and 10 at the 27. Right back to Joe Ross, has room, up to the 15, to the 13-yard line. Shane Henson, the linebacker, brings up Joe Ross. Let's credit the offensive line, Rusty Parrish. Rex Nottage also enjoying a fine afternoon against the defensive front of James Madison. That time, Joe Ross just a gaping hole up the middle. He does a good job of picking him up, putting him down. That's all he had to do because the offensive line did a good job of opening up the hole for the run. First down at the 14. Ross again moving forward. A gain of six. Brought down a pile of white shirts. At the bottom is Shane Henson and Shannon Bisman, the middle linebacker. Joe Ross will come out of the lineup. And Lester Eford, a junior, will come in. Important stop here for George, uh, James Madison, that is. They really need to stop the Eagles right here. Here's the play that the Tim game. Stowers calls Irk Ball. Powerhouse backfield. Alonzo McKee lunging, leaping forward on second down for a gain of two. Shannon Bisman met him right there at his middle linebacking position. Some other scores. The top-ranked team in 1AA. Eastern Kentucky leading Austin P by a touchdown. The Colonels, two weeks ago, timeout called. That's a timeout by Georgia Southern. Let's take a timeout, too. Eight and a half minutes remaining. We'll take timeout position number 21. We'll be back in Statesboro after this. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the fourth period. James Madison closed this ball game up to 21 to 13. 
But the Eagles have converted on third downs in this march. 5 of 11 for the ball game. And now find themselves at third down and two at the five-yard line. Irk ball, powerhouse backfield. Raymond Gross got his hands on it. First down, Georgia Southern. Richard Grievous comes out of the defensive backfield to save a touchdown. Raymond Gross gets up gimpy, a limping Raymond just a little bit. He had Daryl Hopkins trailing on the play. I hate to keep harping on something, but I was just looking down in the stands and some of the uh, fans were saying, holding their hands up like, gee, how does he do that? Control that ball with one hand up in the air. It's so dangerous. But uh, Raymond Grill so far has not caught the ball up today. Perhaps I was premature in calling first down. Perhaps not. Eight minutes and 16 seconds remaining. Georgia Southern 24. The James Madison Dukes 13. First down. Again, this play is called Irk Ball. Power eye, Alonzo McGee leaping from behind the eye formation. Lester Eford is fullback, and Daryl Hopkins also there. McGee lunging forward, bat at the top of the pile. Gain of at least one. Alonzo McGee for a one-yard gain. Richard Grievous there on the left side of the James Madison defense. You stack all your beef to the right side, and you get your craziest running back to jump over the top. That's what you do, and Alonzo McGee did a good job that time, getting Georgia Southern just a little bit closer. Alonzo McGee, a senior, comes out of the lineup, and Joe Ross, who has nine touchdowns so far this year, is in there. Ross, up at the top, touchdown! <laughs> Joe Ross from two yards out, Important touchdown. Eagles playing headstrong football, just buckling it up and going up over top. Look where he is met. Upton Jackson. Forward momentum looks like a touchdown for Georgia Southern. Get it the entire Georgia Southern offensive line with that touchdown. Mike Dallas. For his 25th consecutive extra points. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the game. Eagles stretch it out a little bit against James Madison. Seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Well, Raymond Gross engineering a drive that's capped off by Joe Ross for his 11th career touchdown at Georgia Southern. And with seven and a half minutes remaining, homecoming festivities can strike up the band once again. And we see some fans, part of this crowd of 21,067, head for the exits at Allen Paulson Stadium. Again, seven and a half minutes remaining. Leon Taylor and Tom Green stand deep for James Madison. Eagles have won four in a row, trying to make it five in a row. Don Norton's boot. Tom Green in his own end zone. Let's run down some other scores this afternoon in Division I AA. Fifth rated Youngstown State leading Ohio 24 0 in the fourth. In the third, Richmond upsetting sixth rated Massachusetts 9 7. The Citadel leading VMI 10 0 in the second. Some other scores. Louisville, Howard Schnellenberger's club landed on Cincinnati 41 10 in the fourth. Also fourth quarter. Clemson Tigers leading North Carolina 20 to 3. Duke 31, Wake Forest 6 at halftime. <laughs> Williams gonna have to throw the ball. Dwayne Hayes at the 32. Mark Giles got an ankle. Shane Maxwell grabbed him around the waist and they combined to bring down Dwayne Hayes but not after he picks up a first down. Every time James Madison has been in trouble, as you look at the Georgia Southern scoring drive, 11 plays, 60 yards, the time elapsed, 5 minutes and 16 seconds, a long drive, and a lot of it was via the fullback, who Coach Joe Przyski said he did not want to hurt him. Especially, no, excuse me, he did not want the outside people to hurt him. The delay, Statue of Liberty, Joe Sparksman, smelled out brilliantly by junior linebacker Michael Berry. Nothing doing whatsoever. Other scores. Florida State beating South Carolina 41-3. Marshall leading Appalachian State 
There you see the old Statue of Liberty play. They've run that once or twice in this ball game. This time, Georgia Southern was up to the task. Florida State leading South Carolina 41-3 in the fourth quarter. Marshall shutting down Appalachian State 29-0 at halftime on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Eric Williams scrambling. That head on by Mike West. Patrick Carr being dragged along for the ride. Tim Brown and Steve Busoletti also in on the tackle. Well, you're in that territory that's fourth down. You work on four downs in an offensive possession. Speaking of that Southern Conference, next week we travel up to Chattanooga to take on Buddy Nix's UTC Moccasins. Three o'clock kickoff on all of our Georgia Southern Sports Network stations, and along the way, the Sports Southport Network and Family Net. It's a player down on the field for James Madison. Try to pick that up for you. Delano, if there's been one factor in Georgia Southern stopping the momentum of James Madison and pulling away here in the second half, what has it been? Well, I would def definitely say it's the play of the offensive and defensive line. Well, let's take a break now with six minutes remaining in the ball game on the Georgia Southern Sports Network. And Eric Williams looking long for Dwayne Hayes across midfield. The ball overthrown, and Hayes picked it up along the James Madison sideline right in front of their bench. Rodney Oglesby was defending and nudged Hayes, but he was out of bounds. And on third down, the pass incomplete. That brings up fourth down. And that brings on punter Scott Todd. Keep an eye on the up back in this formation because it's full back. Willie Lanier. Watch the fake on fourth down from the 30. Todd with plenty of time. Rodney Oglesby retreating. What a thunderous boot at the 15-yard line. Down by Pat Carey. What a leg. Scott Todd, 60 yards. Make that a 65-yard boot with 5.21 remaining in the third period. Georgia Southern on top, 31-13, and the Eagles looking very much like a team that's ready for the playoffs. Eastern Kentucky, the runaway favorite at this point. Top ranked and unbeaten, but two weeks ago, their quarterback, Lorenzo Fields, was knocked out for the season. Dislocated left ankle, broken left fibula. But then again, last week, the Colonels bounce back and Tim Lester rushes for 291 yards. So Roy Kidd's Colonels, the team to beat in the playoffs this year, like Georgia Southern was a year ago. Backup quarterback Albert Huntley into the lineup with 5.15 remaining. Huntley handing off to Lester Eford. Loses a yard, bringing up second down. James Madison needing a defensive stop right away and getting it on first down. Lester Eifert nowhere to go because Jamel Harris was right there. We've seen Jamel Harris on a couple of plays in the backfield. He has been staying back there a lot. A tremendous play of the senior from Titton Falls, New Jersey. Clock on the move at 4.44 remaining in the game. Huntley. Shannon Visman in on the tackle. Richard Bryant, the outside linebacker, brings him down. Gain of three, third down and nine. A homecoming crowd of 21,000 here to see it. They don't fall at the pole. A good way to sum up Georgia Southern success right here at Allen Paulson Stadium. 45 wins, should today's trend continue. 45 wins and two losses, a winning percentage of over 95% for Tim Stowers' club. Albert Huntley on third down. Lester Eifert keeping that clock on the run. That'll bring on punter Terry Harvin with 3.50 remaining in the game. Georgia Southern has only lost twice here on its home field back in 1985 to Middle Tennessee and at the beginning of this year against the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. A streak of 38 consecutive wins in between. Harvin standing at his two. And not heard much from Anthony Archer from his 40, the punt returner. A stiff breeze behind Harvin. Let's see if he can get into this. We're going to let the huddle clock wind down. It's at 7, at 6. Harvin with four seconds fields it on the hop again. High 
by Boot. Archer retreating to his 35. A move. Weaving his way, and he'll go down. Steve Busiletti was first one down. Jack Harris, another defensive lineman, makes the stop. Let's take this network timeout. Three minutes remaining from Statesboro. For some, the homecoming party concluding, and for those two, producer Dan Shoemaker and director Skip Hill, the party's just beginning this homecoming weekend at Statesboro. And in the third quarter, Texas, 14. The party is just beginning. Phil, you mentioned something earlier I thought was important. You talked about Georgia Southern looking like a team ready for the playoffs. Georgia Southern has had a history of peaking at the right time. Tom Green, the backup quarterback in there, breaks it big. Gain of 14, Tom Green. We talked about back in the second quarter that it's customary for Green to fill in for Eric Williams, and he has played in every game, and here he is on his first play. See, Tom Green turns it up. He's got a lot of speed, too, as well as Eric Williams. He turns it up that sideline and picks up a big game. Green runs a 4-4, 40-yard dash. He's from Suitland, Maryland. Keeping it one more time. Giff Smith chases him down from the backside. Ball is loose at the 43-yard line, and there's a flag. Jim Mutimer, the safety, right in front of the James Madison bench. Let's update the Virginia-Georgia Tech score. Cavaliers leading 28-14, second quarter. John Moore operating on that Georgia Tech defense. Tom Green from Suitland, Maryland, played at Oxon Hill High School. Here's the call from Chip Ferguson. Personal foul against the Dukes. Personal foul against James Madison. A lot of times, Bill, frustration sets in. A lot of times, frustration sets in, and you get uh, some heated tempers down there. The ball was a little bit loose. Maybe Georgia Southern was reaching, trying to get it. Maybe James Madison said, hey, it's not a fumble. And then you get some guys exchanging words and a couple of blows. Tom Green has rushed for a pair of touchdowns, and you can see that speed, but he's going to have to air it out here on second down and 25. Green originally at attended Arizona State University out in Tempe, but after three days on campus, he was homesick. Transferred back to Maryland to McLeod. Nice grab, pass and grab. David McLeod, a freshman from Richmond, Virginia, Nice catch and nice run. Shy of the first down, third down and two. Tom Green transferred to Maryland. The Terrapins, Coach Joe Kreback, wanted him to play defensive back, and then he makes up his mind to transfer to James Madison. Green again, fumble. Mark Giles recovers. There's your ball game. Mark Giles is a junior from Northside High School in Warner Robins, Georgia, and this locks it up with one minute, 45 seconds remaining. As you can see, Tom Green around left end. He's stripped from behind by the defensive player for Georgia Southern. The ball comes loose, Mark Giles. And I guarantee you, the defensive players, we talked about the offensive players working on fumbles. The defensive players do it as well. Throw the ball down and say, get it. And Georgia Southern works on it just about every day and they really have developed a knack for picking up the loose ball. Albert Huntley again at the quarterback. Lester Eifer, the fullback, pounding through. Our thanks today to James Madison Athletic Director Dean Ellers, head football coach Joe Perzicki, and sports information director Gary Michael. We also appreciate the efforts of Georgia Southern Athletic Director Bucky Wagner, head football coach Tim Stowers, sports information director Matt Rogers, assistants Tom McClellan, and Jim Steffen. Today's game is produced by Dan Shoemaker, director Skip Hill. Our spotter in the booth is Toby Winkler. Jim Radcliffe is executive producer of the Georgia Southern Sports Network. After this play. Eford is keeping the clock running. Also want to point out today, and 
Talk about a man who's very special to Georgia Southern football and to the university. The grand marshal of this year's homecoming parade, Alan Paulson, the man for whom this stadium is named, an industrialist and sportsman from Savannah who created Gulfstream Aerospace, one of the leaders in the aerospace industries. They des design, build, and market corporate jets. Mr. Paulson just jetting out of here a few minutes ago on his <laughs> helicopter, choppered in yesterday for the homecoming parade back out again and back in this morning. They call this place the prettiest little stadium in America. And Mr. Paulson donated about a fourth of the original $4 million needed to get this place started. What a tremendous guy he is, Bill. I met him on a couple of occasions. Uh, asked him a couple of questions, like maybe giving me a couple of bucks, but no, no, he wouldn't give me. <laughs> listed recently in the Forbes 400, also listed as one of the five wealthiest people in Georgia. Exactly. Raymond Gross today, very solid. 64 yards rushing. He scores a touchdown, passes for two touchdowns, and totals up 197 yards on a very efficient 12 of 19 in the air. And look who he's over there on the sideline joking with. Terrence Terrell. They could have very well won the game early on with those two big touchdown passes. Fourth down, Terry Harvin, the senior from Keystone Heights, Florida, back on his 30. Going to boot it away, and Anthony Archer back at the 15. Credit also should go today to defensive players Paul Sickley and Jim Mutimer. They had a set, uh, interceptions, and Mark Giles, the junior safety, on that fumble recovery just a few minutes ago. Well, we're at letter sweater time once again, and Georgia Southern ready to stretch that winning streak from four to five. Archer lets it hit and take a hop into the end zone. Shane Maxwell, first one down, but not in enough time. And three seconds remaining in this ball club. Georgia Southern entered in this game, rainy, entered this game, ranked ninth in the nation. Let's take a look at the ratings in a different way, though. And the USA Today power rankings for the grade schedule strength, the Eagles rank fourth behind Furman, Middle Tennessee, and Eastern Kentucky. Tennessee Chattanooga, where we'll be next week, ranked 99th overall. Oh, geez. overall, that's that's all Division 1A and AA clubs. And Georgia Southern ranked 65th overall in all 1A and 1AA clubs. Tom Green lets it fly. McLeod makes the nope. That's incomplete, and that is the ball game. Final score: Georgia Southern beats James Madison 31 to 13. Let's take this local break. We'll be back to wrap up the ball game after this timeout.